about right there. There you go. That you should, should have been, it. yeah, without sound. Yeah, Ryan Buckley <laughs> says you've been talking for five minutes without sound. Come Thank on. Thank you. Come on, I we're feel professionals. Better. I feel better now. Um, there we go. Now people are saying hey. they can hear us. Okay, what? Well, now you got to, we just, let's let's do it. Now okay, you got to, we have to completely restart the show now. Okay, are we ready? Uh, are we? Okay, go. Hello. 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 <laughs> All right. Should work. Right this. There. Hey, there we go. Now this we is go. Monty okay, in good. the morning. Technical the show difficulty. Phoenix Magazine readers voted hey. number one talk radio show in Arizona. Number one during your morning commute. Number one whenever news breaks during your day. And number one whenever and wherever you want to talk sports. Now it's time for Monty in the morning. Hey, yo, man. Welcome back to the show. Indeed, you can hear us now. We are live at Max Muscle Nutrition in South Jordan. And the audio works now, from what we're told. Amazing. So, appreciate that. Jake, good to see you, man. You as well. Um, it is Friday, so two huge announcements to tell you about today. Coming up at 7, we have a big, big update on our BYU Notre Dame drive away to Las Vegas to see BYU uh, and Notre Dame in the Shamrock Series. We'll tell you all about that. A huge, huge addition to this promotion for you. Seven Mountain Time will describe that perfectly for you. If you are able to come down this morning to Max Muscle Sport uh, Nutrition, Max Muscle Nutrition in South Jordan. Yes. Come and get a Mega Millions ticket. It's a billion dollars. That means you walk away with about $380 million. And it's free. And it's free. We have a ticket for you. You don't have to do anything. Walk in, grab a Mega Ticket, and win yourself a billion dollars. First thing you would do with a billion dollars. Well, you would give your tax money away. So, yeah, so you guys, probably. thanks for coming in. Um, you w- you would walk Appreciate away with you. 380 million, right? So that would yeah. be the first thing you would do. Yes, yes. Um, first thing you would spend your own money on. Uh, a better a, a setup that works perfectly every time. <laughs> that tells us when the audio doesn't work, right? <laughs> um, I think the very first thing I would probably spend my money on um, is I would do something for for somebody else. Yeah, I probably, think I would. Probably. I would do something for now, isn't a friend there an or a obligation family. If you win the lotto, See, guys, to do something for somebody else, isn't there an obligation? There is an obligation. Yeah, there has so, to be. We'll talk about that. That as the show goes on. There's a big update on the uh, Utah Jazz for you. The Knicks and the Jazz working on the Donovan Mitchell trade. There's one player that could be a deal breaker in that that trade. So we'll tell you all about that coming up. But. Let's restart our conversation about Utah because um, we are talking Utah to the uh, Big Ten or the Big 12. And the question that we're asking this morning is, what do you do if you are Utah? What do you do about Big 12 versus Big Ten? And the question of the day is, should Utah be holding out for the Big Ten? Is Utah in a position to hold out for the Big Ten? Let's talk about brand because that's really what this all comes down to as we talk about Utah. Utah is, I don't think, any doubt, one of the the best football programs in the country. There's no question about that. For sure. You have one of the best athletic directors now, powering and enabling one of the best football coaches in Kyle Winningham. You have beautiful facilities. Like, Utah is a great program. The question is, does Utah fit into the Big Ten? Does Utah present a value proposition for the Big Ten? That's the question that I would ask. And, Jake, I think if you're the Big Ten and you're, you're connected with people like Florida State is one of the big names out there mm-hmm. for the Big Ten. Um, you're looking at the Miami Hurricanes as one of those teams that's out there for the Big Ten. Does, Flor- does, does Florida State and, and Miami usurp Utah's ability to get into the Big Ten? I don't think it usurps it. I don't think that they're certainly a stronger brand per se, but I think the problem for Utah is is that they don't have time. You're, you're, you're out of time right now. You have to get something done the option to stay in what is a dying pac-12 conference that's that's not obviously a viable option i mean going going to the mountain west is also not an option utah needs to find their path to stay in a power five conference and i think that i I think that the big 10 you know while that would be great that would be ideal that would be like perfect world scenario yes i think it's just not the, the process is too long i think the big 10 already has power brands obviously and i think that the big 12 presents a unique opportunity i mean what better opportunity for utah than to be on espn playing the holy war in a new conference and also i think utah would have the ability to go out and contend for for the Big 12. I think they would be in a fine opportunity or a fine position to go and do that. Whereas in the Big 10, you have legit, you know, 
college football playoff national contenders every single year. So not that that's a bad thing, but I just think that how great would it be your first year in a new conference to go out and and compete for that conference and auto bid into the college football playoff? That would be ideal. Well, I also think that that's that's absolutely a a big deal. Like I I think when you look at the brand of the Big Ten, you look at Ohio State. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm not personally a believer in Jim Harbaugh at Michigan. I just don't right. think they win enough. I know he had a nice year last year, but he's going to have to come back and do that again. Well, it's consistency. Yeah. So in, in Ohio That's State, what it is. the thing is, Ohio State, even now that Ryan Day's taken over, have they yeah. really missed a beat from Urban Meyer's time there? No, they haven't. And I think actually, if you ask most people, Ohio State's probably on better footing than they were um, when Urban was there because now there isn't that black cloud of, of controversy hanging over right, the program. Right. And Ryan Day's continued to recruit there. That's the Big Ten, in my opinion. I think the Big Ten is a phenomenal conference. I think it's overvalued. Um I think when you look at the Big Ten, it's a one-team conference here today. That's my – in football. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, it's Ohio State, right? right? So I look at what Utah would bring to the conference. Absolutely, they bring football to the conference. Utah's not getting into the Big Ten. Right. They're not. And I think when you look at the Big 12, if I'm making the decision at Utah, and obviously I'm not, but if I'm making the the – the decision at Utah, I'm all in on the Big 12. And by the way, I don't think it's some horrible thing to go to the Big 12. Like, I, I This is definitely not a scenario where, you know, if you don't get to the Big 10, that the Big 12 is all of a sudden some, you know, like terrible option for you. I think the Big 12 presents a lot of value. I think the, the going to the Big 12 versus not going anywhere at all is obviously an improvement, but I just think this concept <laughs> yes. of, like, this concept of you know, being in the same conference as BYU with with everything that's gone on, um, you know, between these two schools, obviously the rivalry, obviously all the junk that was talked from Utah to BYU fan. Like, I just think it's a perfect was there setup. Ju- there, there was junk talking? Uh, yeah, I think, a, sure? I think a little bit more than that, as we all are well aware. I would I would agree with that. Um, I, I think it's I think what you're going to see is that Utah has to be all in on the Big 12. Yeah. And I, I think when you look at the, the conversation that are going on around um, college football and and you see where the Big 12 is moving, Mm -hmm. I think the Big 12 is in position to get more than the $60 million we've talked about on their TV deal. I mean, if if you're able to add um, San Diego State and you know what what was interesting yesterday on the show? We talked about SMU. Right. And I didn't mean to light the world on fire with SMU. (laughs) Somehow that happened. Like if you look at the comments section on our our YouTube channel, and you read the comments about SMU yesterday, I don't know why Dallas is not valued by Mm. Big 12 fans. The thing that I would tell you is you have TCU that's in Fort Worth. Right. If you're a Texan, I think you are wildly aware that Dallas and Fort Worth um, are two absolutely different universes. Right. And I think when you look at SMU, you have a brand you have ability, you have talent, mm-hmm. you you have a good uh, educational institution, SMU puts you in the heart of Dallas, Texas. Right. That gives you Dallas, that gives you uh, Fort Worth, that gives you Houston with the University of Houston, um, Texas Tech gives you Lubbock. Like, I mean, you have real reach. There is no reason if you are the Big 12 and SMU is available to you that you say no to that. Yeah. If you add SMU and San Diego State, you own the state of Texas, Right, you're losing obviously Oklahoma and and Texas, right. so you're losing a significant part of you know your influence in Texas with both Oklahoma and Texas. So now you're able to recover what you lost in Texas, and you are able to add Southern California. So in my opinion, I, I just don't understand why there is a negative perception of SMU. Yeah, there there shouldn't be a negative perception. And once again, and I guess this is my theme of the show today to to recoup value versus having no value at all is obviously the the way to go like you yeah you lost the texas brand absolutely but to still be included in the texas market is is what you want that's what you need and and i still go back to why wouldn't why would the big 12 not just just take the entire pac-12 conference or most no idea why would the two not just merge and make it happen because then from a geographical standpoint you have a lot of coverage and, and i think if there's ever a, a, a scenario in college football where the big 12 could could reasonably you know compete if you will they'll never be level with the sec reasonably but, but though even compete reasonably with the, the right SEC, word. i think that has to happen you got to yeah. have those california markets you got to have a footprint in texas even if you're not you know 
Texas University to have a footprint and influence. University there of still, Texas. University of Texas. Hook'em excuse horns. me. Sorry. Yeah. Hook'em <laughs> hook horn. I think this is it, right? Hook'em horns, right? You know, like, but you have to have that footprint. So I, 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 I to me, I think it's very valuable to have SMU. Yeah. And I'm not saying, by the way, for all the Texans, and, and I know that, again, there was a huge amount of Longhorn fans in yesterday. Right. But for all the Texans, I'm not saying that that SMU or Houston or TCU or Tech or any of those teams are on the level of a Texas A&M or a, or a UT. Mm -hmm. They're not, and I totally understand that. But if you're the Big 12, should you just walk away from that then? Well, no, of course you wouldn't. Because I think very much to your point, you have to do what you can do to compete against those guys. Yes. I think that is, that is hugely important that you're able to compete in Texas. And to your point about Southern California, it's absolutely right. And by the way, I also think you have to do everything you can do to drive a stake into the heart of the Pac-12. And let's yeah. not forget that today, George Klyovkov, the commissioner of the Pac-12, is going to give his state of the conference speech. And I don't think there is any doubt that this is one of the most anticipated statements in college football. It's truly incredible. Because I don't know what you do. I, I just don't know timing wise how it could have worked out any worse for the Pac twelve, oh, honestly. Like Seriously. But I also think I'm I'm a bit personally like in life and in sports, I'm a big believer you, you know, yeah, adversity strikes, but also they're being given an opportunity to sort of set a narrative, to sort of set a trend on where you know, where they're gonna go. Cause that's that's the question, like like that's what we all want to know. What's the Pac-12 going to do? Because yeah. right now, as we've talked about all, you know, probably the last two weeks on the show, there's not a real, there's not some yellow brick road to success for the Pac-12. So I think today when he's speaking, you know, that's the mission. Hey, I need to, I need to tell people what we're going to do or what the path forward is. Yes. Like that's what has to happen. I would expect nothing less. And if, and if they... Listen, if the Pac-12 comes to their media day without a plan for success, without a plan to move forward in some capacity, that that to me, one, would be very on brand for the Pac-12, but two, would be incredibly disappointing because I, I don't think, I, I know there are a lot of people that say, hey, the Pac-12 isn't valuable, the Pac-12 after dark thing isn't valuable, which I disagree with. But what I'm here to tell you is they're still a P5, right? Like they, they were still a P5, they're still valuable. Absolutely. In what... I just don't know what that path looks like back. That's my thing. I don't know what that looks like. Yeah, and I, I think one of the things that's so interesting, and, and again, this is just my opinion, one of the things that I find so interesting about what you're seeing in all these conversations is uh, the Monty Show is live at Max Muscle Nutrition in South Jordan, Utah this morning, giving you uh, Mega Millions tickets, and it's actually Mega Billions. Mega, the Mega Billions. Mega jackpot is at $1.025 billion. So come on by. We have free tickets for you. But um, one of the things that I think is so interesting this morning as we talk about college football expansion is that the perception of programs. So let's play bigger than right. with Utah. Right. Utah, a, a, a better brand or a bigger brand than the Miami Hurricanes. Mm, I, no, I can't say it. Nationally, I can't say that. I think that Miami has a lot of heritage for sure. Reality. Utah, a bigger, better football brand than the University of Miami Hurricanes. I would say absolutely they are. The perception is, is that the Miami Hurricanes, very much what you said. Yeah. The Miami Hurricanes are a bigger, better program. And Utah, in my opinion... And I think, in fact, plays better football, has more consistency, puts more guys in the NFL, recruits better, educates better. True. I think all of their infrastructure, all of their facilities, they're a better program than, than Miami is. The Miami Hurricanes, they're a better program. Mario Cristobal, I don't know what he's going to do at Miami. Maybe he turns that thing around and they become a national well, we power. Well, we already know he took the chain away, so that's his first problem. You know what yeah, I mean? How about that? They took away the turnover how do you, chain. How do you take away the turnover chain at Miami? How does that Because happen? we don't have fun in college football <laughs> yeah, anymore. Apparently this, not. Is a, this is a business, and don't you forget it, right? Yeah. But I think perception is, is that Miami's a bigger program. Mm -hmm. Perception is Florida State, is Florida State bigger a bigger brand and a better program than Utah. No, not anymore. I think I think wow. five years ago maybe. 
Yes, not anymore though. I think that to me, I would rather have the the Utah brand. I think it's a better fit. I think that I think that the Utah brand is more consistent. Like, when's the last time we heard from Florida State in football? You know, like, it's and I'm not trying to hate, but it's been it's been a couple years since Jimbo Fisher went yeah. to Texas A&M. Yeah, I mean, honest to goodness. I um, mean, when Jimbo was there, you had what was it? I think it was was it NBC or was it HBO doing like all access on their program? That they were at a, a really high right. level there. That's you right. know, and and. And I just think that, you know, you you can't, you know, the descent from that when your head coach leaves is is vast, and it is fast as well. And, and that's why I say I'd rather have Utah. I think Florida State's brand is better in college football. Mm -hmm. I think their history and their tradition is better than Utah's. Right now, today, Utah's a better program. But I think Florida State brings you more television money. It brings you more appeal. I think what's really interesting about this better than or like bigger than brand conversation when we compare Utah to other schools is the age of the fan. Like how many, because there's a, obviously an influx of, of younger folks coming into, you know, college football fandom every single year. Yes. So my point is, is how many of those younger people remember what Urban did at Utah? How many of those younger people remember, like uh, even remember have any sort sort of uh, appreciation for what Jimbo did at Florida State. I, you know you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I, I think don't it's know. a valid question. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Um, you know, it's interesting you talk about that because I think one of the comments this morning, TJ McVeigh said Miami and Florida State are living in the past and I'm an FSU fan. Do you see what I, I mean? I think that's exactly right, TJ. I think you're looking at a situation where you've tried to rebuild what Bobby had there. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a very difficult task. That is a very, very dif difficult act. Mm -hmm. uh, TJ also says, good to see you guys this morning. Great idea to have the show at Max Muscle. Oh, thanks, TJ. Yeah, I appreciate you. Man. Uh, you know what? So many people have come in this morning. Um, you know, make sure you tell Mrs. Monty, Mrs. Monty and, and Taylor from Max Muscle are walking around. Say, hey, I'm Jim or I'm Steve or I'm this guy because we really want to be able to shout you guys out. TJ, thanks for coming in, man. Yeah, appreciate uh, it. Bo Utterman says, sorry, Utah is not anywhere close to Miami or Florida State. Reality is dead here. I, I think know, man. I, I think know. reality versus perception is the question. Mm -hmm. I think you could be exactly right that reality is never going to be... I don't know that reality is ever important even. I think, I think perception is far more important. Here's my perception. Utah just went to the Rose Bowl. What else is there to talk about? Right, like Utah is yeah. is winning. Utah is pushing through adversity. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. And for those who are not in the state of Utah, you you probably wouldn't have followed this as closely as someone who is in state. Utah just had several deaths in their program over the last two seasons. There were rumors that Kyle Whittingham was going to be retiring at the end of the year, going out on top. You know, with the you know with the, the Rose Morgan Bowl the Morgan Scally the Morgan scandal. Scally thing. Like there was a lot happening at Utah, but I can't emphasize this enough, Utah is still getting to major bowl games. When is the last time that a Miami or a Florida State got to a major Rose Bowl level bowl game? And, and again, I'm not trying to hate on those programs, but when we talk about, hey, would you rather have Utah or these programs? I do agree with the with the uh, you know with the idea that hey like Florida programs Florida based programs are living in the past right now and they need that path forward. Look at the look at and the look, Florida Gators, look who's man. Showing up, bro. Hey, Let's Jeremy go. Bolton. Let's go. What's up? Jeremy's in the house. My guy, good to see you. Um, <laughs> no, you got you got to come bro, in here. You, yeah, you got to come in here, Jeremy Bolton. Come on, and look, he brings rock star. Dude, look Jeremy, at you, my guy. Jeremy. You got to bro. Yeah, here, bro. Come yeah, on, you you got to get in here. I'm going to sacrifice my seat. I, I, yeah, you got to right You got to do that, Bolton. Hold on. Here, I'm going to put this down. Yeah. Unbelievable. Jeremy Bolton r rolled in here wearing a, a, a his Alex Caruso jersey. What's up, man? Good to see you. Yeah, you got to host the show here, dude. Okay. Look at you, Jeremy Bolton, wearing the Alex Caruso. How's it going, man? Good to see you, dude. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being here. What's hey, up, man? Not much. Made the made the voyage out here from Centerville, so. And you, Alfred, oh, you're a Centerville guy. Nice. And you brought the Cubs hat. Cubs hat. That's unbelievable, so, dude. I know. So your kids bought you an Alex Caruso jersey. Yeah, the casuals, those jerks. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> they were so funny when they got it for me. Too. It They're is like, funny. Happy Foolish Day, Dad. That's amazing. <laughs> Punks. That is amazing. Yeah. So. You're one of our most most loyal guys. So, A, thank you for listening every day. Oh, you betcha. Yeah, thanks we for, thanks for putting on the show every day. Yeah, this is so fantastic. are you so you're you're a BYU fan? 
right? I am. Obviously. I am. Um, and you are a guy, you, you've got to enter the, the, the giveaway. Yeah. Well, we, my wife and I already got our tickets to go down. So, so you're going. We're going. Oh. We're going there, so if we Wait. get it, we'll give it away to... Wait until seven o'clock. We have a huge update, and which is just six minutes away, by the way. We have a huge update um, on that giveaway. So, but Looking let me ask you, it. what's that? Looking forward to it. Yeah, you uh, should. Um, it, it won't pertain to you, by the way. Now that you're big time and you're going to the game and stuff, you know. Clearly. What do you do? Tell Clearly. us about you. What do you do, man? Oh, nothing. Just living the good life. Work from home. So. Yeah. Um, what What kind of work do you do? I do irrigation is estimating back east. Oh wow! For commercial project, so yeah, it's it's a desk job. It's boring, so this get to, gets you out of the house. Then yeah, I get to watch Caruso highlights all day. That's pretty much all I do. <laughs> watch overrated highlights. It's fantastic. So that's amazing. Um, real quick though, BYU. You're a BYU guy. I am. Jaron Hall. Does he stay healthy? Ah, he better. I don't know. I think hopefully he learned after last year. Clearly he can run the ball. Clearly he can pass it. Yeah. And so. I don't know. It all depends on the running back, right? And yeah. Their, and their offensive line, if he can. Well, the offensive line's got to stay healthy. There's no oh, doubt about that, yeah, right? So, I mean. Yeah. Well, you get Williams back there and hopefully, God, I don't know. I I hope so. So. Well, because you know, you know who's behind them. The greatest quarterback ever. Should have played at Boise. I'm telling you, <laughs> played at Boise. I'm telling you yeah. that the backup quarterback is always the best quarterback at BYU. But I actually sure. think if Jaron, if Jaron stays healthy. I actually think that they can they can do big things because he I think he is re, he is talented I think he's fantastic, um, mm -hmm. but he can't be he can't be doing what he did against Arizona State diving at the goal line and because for the next what three weeks he was half of himself clearly like, no he did set up the greatest play in BYU history there with uh, Tyler Algier through the interception the setup for Algier with the punch down come on back to Harleen back to Harleen <laughs> clearly that. Clearly, that's number one. One of the greatest Harleen. moments of my sports talk radio life in fandom was Beck and Harleen talking about Beck to Harleen at Man Camp all those years ago. Oh, Man Camp. Do you remember that? Yeah. I remember hearing stories of Sean Bradley wrapping Kyle Gunther around his belt. Yes. And manhandling him. And, oh, yes. Oh, Sean Bradley. Yeah. Tragedy of Sean so. Bradley. Thanks for bringing that up. Jeez. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, no, in all seriousness, I think that was a great play, that by was. the way, Algier with that yeah, fumble. It's fantastic. And fantastic. speaking of uh, speaking of Williams, Swag is going to have a big year in Detroit. No? Detroit. He should. But Detroit's like the Cleveland Browns of the NFL. But wait, you know they're on hard knocks, right? You know that Detroit isn't, isn't there, aren't the Lions hard knocks this year? I think the Lions are hard knocks this year. Huh. He's going to be, I think they are. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But the 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 Alex the Alex Caruso jersey wearing Jeremy Bolton. That's amazing, dude. That awesome. your kids did that for you. I know. So by the way, before before we make this announcement, when's the next Ragnar, bro? When's the next twenty six point two sticker? It's Spartan. I have like twenty stickers for you guys out. <laughs> Spartan. Put, put it on your car. Get it right. <laughs> Did you, but by the way, did you bring the rocket ship? What are you driving today? Uh, I just driving my Civic, so didn't bring the rocket ship. He today. drives this. So let me get this straight. It's, it's my wife, so I don't have control. You're driving a Honda Civic. Jake can. Jake has like excommunicated everybody in his life who drives a Civic. I'll give you a pass though, because you wear the headband. All right. <laughs> well, I'm this really, I am really appreciative that you are here. Oh, you I really am. support the show, and oh, I, I am just, I. I, I think it's cliche, and I want everybody who's watching the show right now to know this. Like, it's rare that we're in public. Um, but when we get to meet guys like you, and when, when we get to tell you, you are what makes this show great. You commenting every day, you breaking balls over Alex Caruso every day. Like, that's hey, what this show's about. Caruso does all the overrated work himself. So, he's the one that tanks teams. So, and I hope, wow, I hope <laughs> that Alex Caruso winds up wearing a, a jazz uniform. Because I will never let you forget. If that happens, you and I are going to a game. I will buy it. If Alex Caruso ever becomes a jazz man, I will buy us front row. We will sit there together and you will clap. Even if it's a slow golf clap, you will clap for that man every single time. I will bring Greg Hawkins. We will eat blue cheese till we die. He announced he's moving back. Greg Hawkins is I moving saw, back. I saw that. How about that? He's coming back to the U.S. to be to be with his dad, who apparently is under the weather. So, Greg Hawkins, good to see you. 
Okay. Anyway, now you have to leave because we have to make this announcement. Perfect. So I don't make it awkward and linger. I have to show off my BYU tap. Oh, wow. good God. That's Shut beautiful. Up. We were sitting at Cafe Rio at the district last night, and this bro, bro rolls up. He's the famous guy with the LeBron crying tattoo on his leg. And he's got Pippin and Jordan on his thigh, and That's he's got a, a, a huge bull's head and a crying LeBron James under it. It's an amazing piece of work. That's, a, that's all. Fantastic. Who did that? Um, Big Deluxe tattooed in downtown. Nice. That's what I was asking. I'm going to get another one here. That's what I was asking about. Michael Bergfalk. If you're doing Japanese, Michael Bergfalk. Good to get it done. Oh, he's, he's right the on. dude. Okay. Anyway, one more handshake. Good to awesome. see you. Good to see you. Good I'll to touch stick, greatness. I'll, I'll stick around for a little bit. Okay, good. That's Jeremy Bolton right there. We are live at Max Muscle Nutrition in South Jordan. Um, and it is exactly 7 o'clock. So, you know, every day on this show, we tell you that we are sending you to see... BYU in Notre Dame in Las Vegas. And we are giving you two nights at the Palms, two tickets to the game, $250 gas card. The only place to get it today is at Max Muscle Sports. Max Muscle Nutrition. Taylor, why did you change the name? It's Max Muscle Nutrition in South Jordan. There's an enter to win box. It does say sports nutrition. Okay, it's over. Max Muscle Sports Nutrition in South Jordan. There is an enter to win box. Yes, I know. Yeah, uh, there is an enter enter to win box on the uh, table over there. You walk in, fill it out. It's all good. Okay, one piece of business before the announcement. Yes. We have to give a shout out to Stephen, who is a nurse at St. Mark's where I used to work. Oh, His wife that? is here for nice. him because he couldn't make it. So Stephen, really appreciate the support and, nice. and watching every day, man. Thank you. Good, Stephen. Appreciate that. But um, you know that our BYU giveaway has been brought to you by uh, Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage. If you need a mortgage, call Devery Davis, 801 543 9666. 801 543 9666. He's the best mortgage guy in the business. Um, MLS, ML, NMLS number. Two seven eight five four five, dude. It is Friday of hey, next man, week. Hey man, you're doing great. You're doing great. NMLS number two seven eight five four five. Devery Davis and Academy Mortgage are equal housing lenders. Devery Davis will join us on a September seventeenth, a Saturday afternoon, when BYU is in Eugene mm -hmm. playing Oregon. He will join us at Barbecue Pit Stop in Lehigh, as we have a BYU Oregon watch party, and we are going to pull the winner and have that watch party at Barbecue Pit Stop in Lehigh. And we are going to put an enter to win box at every barbecue pit stop in the Valley. Yes, All of their locations, Murray, Lehigh, any barbecue pit stop store, you'll be able to walk in starting Monday and fill out an enter to win slip. There's a box on the counter. You just walk into their store, say, hey, I'm here to, to win the trip. You fill it out, you drop it in the box, and you're entered to win. Because now, one of our presenting sponsors for the BYU Notre Dame driveaway is Barbecue Pit Stop. And you, you know them, guys. You love them. Um, we are a customer at Barbecue Pit Stop. They are very much in our lifestyle. We talk yes. about it pretty much every day yes. on this show. Ironwood 885. Highly recommend. The Traeger Smoker Ironwood 885 is our flavor of life. You know we are wing guys. Uh, we talked to our good friend Steve at Barbecue Pit Stop. Now, obviously, flats over drums, right? Okay, see, you joke about this and you start trouble because today is actually national. Uh huh. Today is actually national chicken wing day. Right. I think yeah. you tried to play. A I drop tried. There. It's not. It's it, not. It's, it's not happening. Not. We'll work on it. We'll why. work on it. But uh, today is actually national chicken wing day, and there's no better unit to do that on than a Traeger Ironwood eight eight five. But right, right. Our guy Steve at Barbecue Pit Stop wanted to get on board the show. Wanted to get on board the giveaway. So now. Barbecue Pit Stop is our presenting sponsor, along with Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage of our BYU Notre Dame driveaway. Yes. So again, starting Monday, you'll be able to walk into any Barbecue Pit Stop store, fill out an enter to win uh, ticket. There will be a box on the counter. Um, fill it out, enter it on September 17th, Saturday, September 17th. We are going to do a BYU watch party at Barbecue Pit Stop in Lehigh. We're gonna have a smoker, we're gonna have wings, we're yes. gonna have pizza, it's gonna be amazing. And at halftime of the BYU Oregon game mm -hmm. at Barbecue Pit Stop in Lehigh, we are going to pull the winner out of the box, and we're going to 
There you go. We're going to give away that trip to see uh, BYU and Notre Dame in Las Vegas. So thrilled to have the guys at Barbecue Pit Stop joining the show. Um, Again, you know how this works, guys. When when we, um, in an hour from now, we're going to make a very important announcement that is kind of related to this. But when we bring a partner like that on board, we don't take it lightly. We don't do it lightly. We don't just bring anybody on. You know, we're sitting at Max Muscle. I've known Taylor uh, and Caitlin for a decade. Um, I've known those guys for a very long time. They take mm-hmm. great care of you. I use their products. I use Emerge every day. It's amazing um, stuff. Peach is my favorite flavor. Cherry's my second favorite flavor. Um, like I use the product. So I'm at Max Muscle Sports Nutrition in South Jordan for a reason. We deal with Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage because he's a fantastic mortgage broker. We deal with a guy like Steve and the guys at all the different barbecue pit stops throughout the Valley because they're really good people to do business with. Yes. We need you to support them. We need you to come and talk to Taylor and Kate at Max Muscle in South Jordan, even when we're not doing the show. Um, call Devery Davis. Go to Barbecue Pit Stop because yep. that's how this show thrives. You guys are amazing. You support us. Guys like Jeremy Bolton, um, guys like Mark, it's, you know, that, that come out. You know, like Mark, the city councilman in Bluffdale was here yes. at six o'clock this morning, hanging out, you know, waiting for the show to start. Like, yes, that's what that's what makes the world go round. So we appreciate you guys. So again, the big seven o'clock announcement is that we welcome Barbecue Pit Stop to the show. Make sure you check them out. Barbecue Pit Stop dot com. BBQ Pit Stop dot com. Check them out. If you've ever thought about getting a smoker, if you've ever thought about um, getting into the Traeger world, getting into the big green egg world. There's no better place to do that than at Barbecue Pit Stop. Okay. All right. <sighs> okay, Great so so an hour from now, actually in 54 minutes, we are going to bring you even another more, and it's much not, more significant announcement. And that is not partner related. That is show related uh, update for you guys. So let's, that is like huge life related. Yes. What are the comments saying? What, what do we have? Let's get the um, comments up here. Cody Strickland says September 17th at 1.30 p.m. That's that to be determined. It's likely we're going to do our football Saturday show. We're going to be doing an hour pregame show every Saturday uh, leading up to whether Utah or BYU has the early kickoff uh, an hour before kickoff or the earliest game. Yeah, we're going to be doing a football Saturday pregame show. So um, that's kind of how we're going to set that up. But we're we're coordinating with the guys at Barbecue Pit Stop because updates to come. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty significant event. Yeah, but um yeah, halftime, we're going to draw the winner of the BYU-Notre uh, Dame-Shamrock Series driveaway. So uh, it's going to be amazing. I'm really super stoked about that, so appreciate that. Uh, Luis, Cast- uh, Luis Carlos Diaz says, San Diego State fan. What's up? There Good you to go. see you. Big things coming for uh, you. NY Jazz fan says, loving this new partnership, but it kills me that I do not live in Utah uh, to hit these sponsors online. up. I appreciate that. Appreciate that, man. You can yeah, trust online. me. When I lived in Arizona, Taylor used to ship me product. Yeah. I used to buy product from him yes. and he would ship it to me. Yes. Um, so there's always ways to do things, friends. Always. And, you know, it's interesting. One of the things I talk about with guys like Barbecue Pit Stop or um, Max Muscle, yeah. call the store. Talk to the people at the store. They'll ship to you because a lot of times when you do business on websites, you're not doing business with the local business owner. You're doing business with a, a larger corporation. So um, if you want nutrition advice, please call Max Muscle. One of the great things I say about this, and Taylor's going to join us in a minute, but one of the great things I say about this place is no matter what you need, if you need an energy supplement, um, if you're looking for you know your whey proteins, if you want to know, hey, what's my body composition? They have an in-body machine here. Yes. They can build you a nutrition program. Um, If you want to gain muscle, if you're looking to burn fat, no matter what your goal is with your body, Max Muscle Sports Nutrition has that for you. So you can absolutely uh, call them, come in. You can buy product from them. Just make sure you buy local anytime you have the opportunity to do that. And, you know, with all due respect to large corporations, and I understand blah, blah, blah. The local business owner needs your dollars. There's no doubt. So the barbecue pit stops, the Devery Davises at Academy Mortgage, the Max Muscles of the world, those guys are local business owners yes. on the ground driving and providing for their families. So make sure that you support local as much I as you can. I have to call out Tucker in the comments real quick because Where's he's Tucker? got a hot take on the, the Emerge flavor. Tucker Brady says Fruit Punch Emerge is the GOAT. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, I've had just about every flavor. There's not really a bad flavor There's of not Emerge. A bad, but it's, it's like, you There's know, it's like, it's like everything else in life. You got, you got a ranking, of course. But you know, so. it's funny. I'm sitting here at Max Muscle yeah. drinking Rockstar. Um, I will tell you that Emerge is a far better yeah. energy supplement yes. than any any. I drink Rockstar Recovery because it has no sugar in it. 
mm. and it and doesn't it's not give carbonated. You, yeah, and it's not carbonated. Right. The thing about Emerge is that the I, we. The mental focus that Emerge gives you, mm -hmm. it gives you energy. It absolutely is a fat-burning supplement. It helps you lose weight. It works. Trust me. You're going to lose weight. You're going to feel better. You're going to have better energy. But after about seven to 10 days of taking two scoops of Emerge, mix it in. I mix two scoops in 20 ounces of water. I shake it up. I drink it. About seven to 10 days when you do that consistently, you get mental focus. It's wild. Yeah, it's great. It's absolutely wild that you have a, a, a clearer mind. You know, that, but, you know that, yes. that fog you have in the morning, like when you wake up, the, the, you know, the fog you fight through, that's what Emerge does for me personally. When I, when I drink that early in the morning before the show, I just Jake, get really Jake, good mental. Jake, Jake, oh, Jake, come Jake. on. Jake, 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 The bots Jake, are Jake. back. The bots are back. The bots are back. That's a problem, bro. The bots are back. Yes, I see them. Thank you for pointing that out. See, they saw Jeremy Bolton on right, the show. Right. And they saw the, the sex machine, Alex Caruso's jersey yeah, on Jeremy and, Bolton. It, but it was the headband. We all I know mean, that. It was the headband that put it over the top. No, it was the it was the Alex Caruso jersey. <laughs> Stop. Uh, so now I got to go and block and remove right, right, and right. report. Okay. And, uh, but anyway, my point is with Emerge, the fruit punch is... is I think the, I've had the fruit punch in the past. Mm -hmm. I, listen, I'm a peach and cherry guy. Yeah. I, I've tried all the flavors. Their supplement, there's a supplement called Arm, which is a recovery supplement. Mm -hmm. There's not a bad flavor of, of any of the stuff. One of the yeah. things I really like about Max Muscle is that um, there is, they're absolutely, they taste good. The supplement tastes good. Yeah. I'm telling you, Peach Emerge is the goat. Peach is definitely the one I would go with, but Peach I mean, again, it's, it's all preference. So, all right. Anyway. Um, let's see. Let's. <laughs> Mateo says it's because of the Netflix links Jake clicked it yesterday. It must be. It must be. There hey, it is. Yeah, there hey, we go. There, there we go. We got some product. There, there it we is go. right there. Um, that is your Emerge. Oh, it's, it, it, they have the container again. No. Nice. The Fruit Punch Emerge in the container. I don't dislike the bag. Yeah. I don't, but there's something. There is. This brings me back. Oh, they are different. Oh, well, pick up them. Yeah, here, let's get... Pick let's up get a it. microphone, Taylor. Yeah, Come on, here. man. Yeah, yeah let's get you, no, let's well, get you yeah, going. Here, here. They're different, I'll get, I'll get he them says. Here. I'll get them in here. I'll get them in here. Okay. Here. Yeah, you can pick that up, Taylor. Oh, go ahead. Go, down. go for it. Oh, Is that oh. where are we plugged in here? Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah go, go ahead. There we go. There we go. We got them. So they're different, you say. Yeah, so there's two different products. So you got the Emerge, which is the classic that you had been taking for yes. years. Yes, and love it. Yes. Right. Yeah. And then we've got the Emerge Zero. Uh, the difference in that one is that there's a little less caffeine. So when you're saying mm. you take two scoops of yes. the Zero, yep. that's, you know, that's fine. If you took two scoops of the original, <laughs> uh -oh. you'd, be, you'd be buzzing. You'd be really? super buzzing and stuff like that. And so one scoop's usually good for the original. Uh, the zero is more for those that mm -hmm. want a little less caffeine. And, gotcha. Which is frankly, I think, which is what I need. I mean, you you know this. You, you're you in the business. Like, we take a lot of caffeine in this world. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I drink, I usually drink one rock star a day and, and one or two scoops of Emerge. Uh -huh. That's all the caffeine I need. Yeah. It, yeah. it is. And especially like Jake was saying, yeah. I get up at 4.30 every day. Well, if well, I we, drink, we, we, we. Yeah. Two O's and Goose Boys. <laughs> if, I, if, if I take Emerge first thing, I, I'm not tired. And it really does carry the whole day for me. Yeah. I'm not even saying that because we're sitting here. And you don't give it to me. Taylor doesn't give me anything free, nothing. Yeah. Like, we are customers of, of Taylor's. He's not an advertiser on the show. We're just, he, he just, just is somebody here, man. good to do business yeah. with. Yeah. Um, but, it carries me through the whole day. Yeah, so it, I feel better about it's when got I use some it. fiber in it, and so that kind of sl slows the ah, digestion there of it is. the different the caffeine and everything like that, and so it gives you more of a slow release. So yeah, it's going to last a little longer. And by the way, while I have you kneeling, I was going to say standing here. While I have you <laughs> kneeling here, um, you're also a veteran. Yes, you're a family man. Yeah, um, your kids hiked. Your your girls, Caitlin and your girls, went for an 11 mile hike yesterday. <laughs> that's for real. Yeah, that's real. Like, yep. I mean, you guys are a family owned business at, at Max Muscle. We are. Yep. So my uh, wife runs it. Um, and yeah, we've been around for, you know, 10 plus years. Yeah. And yeah, family business. And um, yeah, we just really, like you said, we really appreciate every customer that comes in. Um, when you support local, it really means a lot to us. So it does. And I think the um, I think one of the things that really stands out about about the local aspect of, of doing business is that that's, this is, this is the guy. Yeah. Like when you, when you buy from, 
and Amazon, with all due respect, or you buy from a big box store, like you, you're the guy that misses out on that business. Yeah. It's not like some big brand. It's Taylor and, and your wife and your kids. Like that's the difference that you're making when you're supporting a small local business like yeah, that, man. No, it's, it makes a huge difference. And we really appreciate you guys. We appreciate anybody that, uh, supports us and you appreciate the guys who finally fi finished building Bangor highway <laughs> i would assume yeah that was a little bit of a slog so just coming out of the pandemic and things were going great and then all of a sudden yeah they did a huge underpass overpass uh yeah. construction right here that um so yeah we are glad that that construction's over yeah so we're at max muscle in south jordan right by costco right by the ochre temple right off of Bangor highway you can't miss it come in um i mean your staff here is great everything is great taylor thanks for letting thanks. us be here today thanks man. so much yeah i appreciate you very much and come get a merge trust me it, it'll knock your socks off okay all right let me get a couple of comments in here uh we really appreciate everybody let's see cam harrison says have a, a large diet coke fountain right now that Diet Coke's not doing it. Kid. No, Come it's on, not. let's go, Cam. No, no, Be better than not. that. Brandon West says, have, there, have they made the big announcement yet? At 7 o'clock, we did. The big announcement is that um, you'll be able to go starting Monday. You'll be able to go, what's up, my man? You'll be able to go um, to any uh, barbecue pit stop throughout the valley here in yes. Salt Lake City, and you'll be able to register uh, to win the BYU Notre Dame drive away. Um, where you get two nights at the Palms Casino, two tickets to the game, and a $250 gas card to get you there. Barbecue Pit Stop is now one of our presenting sponsors on that. So go to any Barbecue Pit Stop starting Monday. Yes. Go to any Barbecue Pit Stop. You can fill out an entry to win And by the way, I just have to stores. say, yeah. the, the turnout so far to get these lotto tickets and to get entered for the BYU tickets has been pretty good. So I would encourage you guys... Get on it. You got, you yeah. got, what is it? I think six weeks to the day or something in that area. You got time, but go out and do it. Go out and do it. Yeah. I think, um, by the way, Mrs. Monty is the gatekeeper on the Mega Millions tickets. So when yes. you walk in, we have free Mega Million tickets here at uh, Max Muscle Sports Nutrition. Not to undersell the lead, the Mega Millions jackpot tonight is a billion dollars. So that, so that means how much do you walk away with? 300 likely depending on your accountant and how savvy they yeah, are. Yeah, we're not paid professionals, okay? <laughs> Likely $380 million is your walk away with that. Yeah. We were actually up at um, Ev in Evanston, Wyoming yesterday buying the tickets, and we walked out, and this lady said, should I do it? Is it worth it? Doesn't the <laughs> government take all that money? And I'm like, you should, and if that's not enough money for you, $380 million, give it to me. I'll handle it for you. We'll never talk again, yeah. but give you know, it to me. Like, I'll we're, handle we're it for fine. you. We're fine. We're good. <laughs> right? We're good. I always love that. People yeah. are like, oh, I'm not playing. It's only $380 million. Hey, man. Hey, man. I'll take it. Thank you. Hey, man. Thank it's you. It's $380 million more million than you had. You yeah. would never see me again. Yeah, honest to God. I I love doing what we do. I'm out. I'm out. I, I'll have a house in Maui. I'll have a house on the beach. I'll have a house in Park City. I'll probably rent my townhouse out. I'll be snowboarding or surfing or doing something yeah i don't know but i 380 million dollars i'm out all right what else we got i'm out what all else right. we got um let's see neville 93 says uh i'll be happy to go visit you lads come on by come on We'd by love to man. see you uh tanner Plummer says the big announcement is that caruso got traded to the jazz and jeremy checked himself into a <laughs> mental institution hey guys hey hey guys yeah good to see you Thank Tanner, you, Tanner, who just moved. <laughs> um, let's see, Dennis. Uh, and Dennis, you know what? I, I, I dropped the ball on this. Uh, let's see. Jesse Harsh gives us two bucks and says, hey, you, uh, Jesse. see you in a few minutes. But I want to say that Riley O'Brien left us $2 as well. Tell Taylor I said hi. I'll see you guys soon, Riley O'Brien says. Hi, Taylor. Good to see you, buddy. Hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dennis says, hey, guys, I can't be there live due to work. Could my Uncle Jesse grab me a shirt and a lotto ticket? Yes. I'm here every morning, and we are huge fans. Yeah, Dude, Dennis. Yes, yes, Absolutely. Yes, Send yes. your uncle in. Yes. I got a box of casual shirts over here yes, for you. Absolutely. Um, we're coming to our end run on those, so they're going to be late. Jeremy, Come and get them. Jeremy, you have a shirt already, right? Do you, yeah, okay, good. Oh, he's wearing oh, it. It's, he's oh, it's wearing it. The commitment's it. real. He's wearing it. Oh, that's right. It took you 10 years to mail yes, it. Yes, that's him. right. That's um, right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but we have casual shirts over here. So make sure that you come in and get one of those as the sun begins to shine yes. on my, my beautiful or, face. Yes. Um, but yeah, so good to see you guys. Everybody, let's see. James Nelson uh, says, Don't worry, you win a billion. People come out of the woodwork looking for money. They certainly yeah. do. 
They certainly do. Let's see. Uh, Bo Stacker. Come on, guys. A Rose Bowl loss doesn't uh, compete with FSU and Miami's championship. It's not even close. But I just think relevancy recently, you know, like it, it, you're, you're, you're not relevant recently. That's the problem. At least I, I think that that, you know, when we're talking about like where Utah is going and, you know, whether they're going to be relevant or, or what the end game is for them. Like, OK, you just put sunglasses on. Sorry. Right. What? I'm a star. You look amazing. I'm in Hollywood. OK. Anyway. Yeah. So and the point stop. is, is that a, to me, a Rose Bowl appearance recently would trump you know, not not having done anything and having a couple championships in your past. Like, that that's what I think the conversation is. Because right, we're not talking about overall big picture the last, you know, 20 years or whatever. We're talking about right here today. So I think right here today, I, I, I do think that Utah is a more valuable entity than, uh, than the Florida programs. You know, I think Florida itself as a program is the closest one to Utah and you could probably make a case they're more valuable. You know, you can. Yeah, I, I think I think that is I think you could make that case. Yeah. I, I think again, and we've been talking about college football this morning as well. Um, obviously with uh, Pac-12 Media Day today, George Klyovkov, the uh, commissioner of the Pac-12 is going to meet with the media this morning. Yeah. Um, I want to say that's 10 Pacific time, 11 Mountain. Mm -hmm. He's going to meet with the media this morning and it's going to be one of the most awkward um, I, I think, I, I think it's going to be one of the most awkward situations that we've seen in major college sports in years. Well, I think it depends how they handle it. My take is, is that it could be awkward a hundred percent. It you, could be, but you know what the sad thing is about Klyovkov and the PAC 12? He's the right guy. He is. He's a really sharp businessman. He knows what he's doing. They're just done. But there's that. That's the sad part is they finally have the but right here's guy. Here's my thing, dude. Here's my thing. Uh, right now, today, before he starts talking, they're done. But what if today he comes out with a plan? What if what if they have something that the public is not aware of, an angle or something they've been working well, on? You know, and and again, I know that 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 it's that's like the what if game. I totally get it. But isn't that his job? His job is to ensure the survival of the Pac-12. So if that if you know, being that it's his job, I would expect him to have some semblance of a plan, you know, to roll out at yep. your media day. Like, like that, that's the beautiful thing. Like we've heard from the big 10, we've heard from the big 12, we've yes. heard from the sec. Yeah. Okay. Now it's your turn. Not now it's your turn to roll out a plan. Is there any way they can survive in the I, big, I in don't the, personally think so. I, I, I don't think so. Right. I just don't know. You, you don't lose programs, the caliber of SC, UCLA, Washington, Oregon, Utah. Like, you don't lose, and, and we haven't even gotten to the Arizona schools yet. You don't lose all that revenue, all that quality, all that brand recognition, and still survive. And that's why I say I think he, he, he's he got to come with something today. Yeah, I don't disagree with you on that. I, I, I just think that there's no way, there's no way that the Pac-12 can survive. And, and I hope it does. I, honest to goodness, I, I am, we, we got a lot of, hey, you guys are BYU homers. I'm a Notre Dame fan. Yeah. Man, like, I, and I have, you know what it is about BYU? I have a lot of respect for what BYU's had to go through. I have a lot of respect for the deep water BYU has had to swim to get through. It's been a grind, bro. Yeah, to get, but just to get through independence. Yeah. To get that ESPN contract. Yeah. To, to schedule the way they've scheduled. And now you're looking at Utah. Utah is going to have to do the exact same thing. Utah's going to have to climb that mountain. Yes. They're going to have to join a new conference again. Yes. And they did it once in the Pac-12. You've just won a conference championship. You've just gone to the Rose Bowl. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to have to do it again because I think the Pac-12 is dead, but man. I think the I think the, the the thought, though, is that if you can survive independence, you can you can survive the Big 12. I mean, I, I think that yeah, and, and that and that to me. And again, I'm not from Utah, didn't grow up here, not not like a, a born and bred BYU fan or Utah fan or anything. But you have to respect the grind. You have to respect the hustle of making it through independence. And I, and I think BYU is not Notre Dame. BYU <laughs> wait, doesn't wait, wait, wait. have Chris Karn is here and he just left us a ten dollar tip. Like, <laughs> and by the way, it should be said, he left the tip there as the Arlington Bears. He left it Let's as the, go. <laughs> the Arlington Bears. Appreciate you, Chris Thank Karn, you, Chris. walking through. <laughs> See, it, uh, okay, so the Arlington Bears, if you don't know, is a reference to the Chicago Bears, and he's got his Mega Let's Millions go. ticket. Let's go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. See? Chris Carn See? will be the sponsor there of the show. Go. Everybody root for Chris Carn to win go. the billion dollars. <laughs> Let's go. But the, the reference to the Arlington Bears is Chris is a good, loyal, faithful Chicago Bears fan. 
And the Bears are probably going to move to Arlington Heights unless Lori Lightfoot, the crazy mayor of Chicago, puts a Lori. dome. You know, puts a dome on the on Soldier Field right now. Yeah. But it's, to me, it's just, it's insanity. So Chris, appreciate the ten dollars as always. Um, let's see, Arlington. Uh, he also says, Chris also says, uh, thanks for the three eighty, fellas. Let's yeah. go, hey man. Let's I, go. How amazing would that be if one of our listeners won? Oh, it'd be incredible. Come on. Now, That'd now, if, if of one dreams. of our listeners, if one of our listeners wins. You're going to Vegas, and you're paying for the watch party that we will be having. Yeah, exactly. You know right. what I mean? That's you're part of the deal. Yeah. Um, I think the Pac-12 commissioner will admit defeat today and say that the Pac-0 is finished. Tanner I, Plummer dude, says I can't he's not see gonna. that. Like, There's I, no way. And I know that that might be a tongue-in-cheek joke, right? Like, I, I, I get that, but I just can't see that that's, that that's a possibility. No way. I, I can't believe that that I would could be see, the case. You know what I could see? I could see a lot of coach talk. I could see a lot of coach speak just like, like yeah, hey, we're going to do everything we can, blah, 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 like. You know, he could say a bunch of stuff while saying nothing. Yeah. You know, I could I could see that, but I just would expect that that they would that they would come with some sort of a of a plan. Like, I, it's, it's his responsibility, man. Look at look at Taylor putting it Dude, up, our, our, putting up a sign to block the sun. Yes. Thank you, Taylor. Thank that you, was Taylor. very nice of you. Um, which Arlington are the Bears moving to? Uh, Arlington Heights, Illinois, where the former uh, Arlington Park yes. racetrack is. Yes. Uh, they own the land under that. Yes. Uh, Patrick Bourne says, ah, Arlington Heights. Yes. Matisse says, ah, the Beetlejuice mayor. I've heard that before. Gene Stream Gamer, good morning too. He says the sunlight is taking over. Nice shades, by the way, Monty. Thank you. Yeah. And C Taylor hooked us up with it. It's a, all good, man. This is block. this is it's part of the game. It's all good. Patrick Bourne says won't happen. Meanwhile, meanwhile, teams uh find the lifeboats. Wow. I well, and talking about the Pac twelve and and Utah, I I think you have to do what you can do to get to the Big Twelve. I I just think that's the best path to have BYU and Utah play every year in basketball and football with leverage. Yeah. In a game that will can you imagine BYU and Utah playing for the Big Twelve championship of football? It's not just about, you know, brother versus brother at that point. It's about there's leverage now. There's there's an actual reason for it other than hey, we just like to do it. I, I think there's no question in my mind that that Utah will get into the the Big 12. I, yeah. I just, I don't know. There's no justification to leave yes, Utah out of the you, Big Taylor. 12. <laughs> now Taylor puts a sign yeah, up to him. See, yes. I mean, this is the kind thank of service you, you get at Max Muscle in South Jordan. Call man, these that's guys, a, man. That's why you got to come in. That's why yes. you got to do business with the boys. Uh, let's see. Kay Sumbry uh, says... Uh, go pokes Cowboys big 12 okay okay the nigh guy says I'm a huge Cardinal fan but after the Murray crap I wish they would move the hell out of the league go Chargers well wow. we'll get to that uh, we'll get to that uh, in a it? minute um, oh hey Riley is here yes he is right there he is hey <laughs> wow you look different with sunglasses on um <laughs> Exactly right. Good to see you, my guy. I remember, it's been like 10 years. But I, I remember you. work at the one with you uh, in Draper. Yeah, absolutely I remember. I stumbled on your guys' channel like five months ago. Yeah. Messaged you guys. I'm like, yeah. man, it's cool to meet you, Jake. Yeah, yeah. you we'll too, see, man. Uh, yeah. Appreciate it, you. I love what you guys do. So I saw you were here at Maximo, so I'm like, all right. This is the earliest I've woken up in a while, but you know it's easy when you got something to go do. Like, hey, say, yeah. how to, uh, you know, how do you guys? So. That's great. Well, maybe you'll win a billion dollars because of it. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say no. So, yeah. what's the first thing you would do with a billion dollars or three hundred eighty million? Oh man, you asked him this the other day. And, yeah. And your answer was, you might not see me for a little while. Yeah. I'm gonna copy and paste that answer. Yeah. yeah. You know. I might just disappear for a little bit. Yeah. I'd still stop by here because you need to get your protein and that kind of stuff. Yes. So, yeah. you know? Yes. <laughs> Good to see you, man. I appreciate you coming yes. by. You're a good supporter of the show. Thank you very much. Um, see, that's the thing. You wouldn't see me for a while. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be gone and forever, I but I, I, you wouldn't see me for a while. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think wrong with that, man. Yeah. Don't think it, there's wrong with that. Um, wow. You guys are amazing in the comments today. Um, okay. So I know, by the way, half an hour from now, we're going to make a... Uh, a, a pretty big announcement about the mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we are live at Max Muscle Nutrition in South Jordan, um, 3595 South Jordan Parkway in South Jordan. Come by. We'll be here, I don't know, sometime around nine, whenever we decide the show is over. Um, Mrs. Monty's got the Mega Millions tickets in her hand. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we are also registering people uh, for the BYU Notre Dame drive away to see the Shamrock Series game at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, a beautiful new uh, stadium for it's the be awesome, man. Oakland now live. 
Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. And it is a it is a palace. The place is absolutely a palace. If, if you haven't been yet, it's gorgeous. Yeah. We're putting you up at the Palms for two nights. Uh, we've got you two tickets to the game and a $250 uh, gas card to get you to, to drive away. It's all brought to you by Devery Davis uh, at Academy Mortgage. Make sure you call Devery with your mortgage questions today. 801-543-9666. NMLS number 278-545. Devery Davis and Academy Mortgage are equal housing lenders and just announced today barbecue pit stop is also one of our presenting sponsors on the byu notre dame drive away we are going to announce the grand prize winner at barbecue pit stop during halftime yes of the oregon byu game on saturday september 17th we're going to have a watch party so come watch the game with us we'll we'll have wings and pizza there for you um and then at halftime we'll have uh, one of our uh, one of our good friends pull the uh, winner's name out and we will hook you up with a trip to see byu and notre dame um in las vegas it is going to be an absolute great time yes. let's talk about donovan mitchell in the utah jazz because yeah. we got a pretty good update yesterday we've been trying to figure out what's going on with donovan mitchell the utah jazz and the new york knicks right so the latest we had heard is that the knicks and the jazz had kind of hit a stumbling block like they had stopped talking we reported two weeks ago after sources told us that the knicks were quite frustrated with what was going on with the jazz in their negotiations i'm told that hasn't really changed much and one of the sticking points here is quentin grimes for the uh new york knicks now there was some talk yesterday that hey the the jazz wanted rj barrett and then reports that they they didn't want R.J. Barrett. I can tell you right now that Danny Ainge and the Jazz, I am told directly from a source at the Jazz, have no interest in R.J. Barrett because he is up for a max extension on his rookie contract. So that is going to be between, I would guess he's going to be north of that $30 million number. Too much. Um, yeah, too much. So I, I think that makes perfect sense not to be involved in that. I think the Knicks, the only reason you would want to trade R.J. Barrett is to avoid paying that number. But there is definitely a difference of opinion on what talent the Knicks want to put into that trade because I am certain to tell you they do not want to trade quickly Grimes and Obi Toppin plus a veteran who's probably going to be Cam Reddish plus for a minimum, a minimum of four first-round picks. That right. is a that is a non-starter. I think that the, if I'm the New York Knicks, Jakes, I, I want nothing to do with that. Right. But I think there is no doubt that the New York Knicks are frustrated with Danny Ainge and the Jazz. Yeah, I, I think that, in, you know, I guess that's warranted, but but my whole thing with this situation is that you know what the asking price has been. You know what Danny Ainge is asking yes. for, and you're trying to get, you know, and I know we disagree in this word, I think it's a discount. You want a discount for Donovan Mitchell. You only want to give up certain players that aren't as valuable as what Danny's asking for to get your guy. And I just don't think there's anything wrong with Danny Ainge being stubborn, man. Like, there's no, no. incentive to trade Donovan Mitchell. Because, again, no, I, I, I'm I, a big believer that you didn't bring Danny Ainge in. You didn't buy the Utah Jazz. You didn't do everything you've done to this point to go into a full-on rebuild in a deal where you didn't get full value back. That totally just agree. does not make sense to me. By the way, the whole Kevin Durant four-team trade narrative, I think, is still out there. I think we haven't heard word one. So you do believe in that? I, well, I think it just still exists. I think that we're... I don't know what it's going to take to get the NBA market going again, but something is going to happen, and I'm hoping it's not the Donovan Mitchell trade. But something's going to happen to restart the fire. And, and I don't know if that's this Westbrook angle. I don't know if it's Kyrie, you know, being moved. I, I, I don't know what that is, but something has to happen to get things going again. Yes. But I'm still going to maintain Danny Ainge controls the market right now. He made the Gobert deal, got way too much for Gobert. That wrecked the Kevin Durant situation. Now he wants a lot for Donovan Mitchell, and the Knicks aren't willing to come to the middle. So I say, hey. Great. You're the Knicks. You haven't won in a minute. It's your job to come to me, not me come to you. Yeah, and I, I think one of the bigger questions here also is this situation with Russell Westbrook and the Lakers and whether or not the Lakers and the Jazz are talking about the Jazz being a third team mm -hmm. that would net them two Laker first-round picks in the future to buy out Russell Westbrook. Because, again, I, and I know we had a quite heated debate about Draymond Green on the yeah, show Yeah, definitely we did. Yeah, I don't see any way any way, shape, or form, that Russell Westbrook can be a Utah Jazz man. I don't. Not with the history and the fan base. Not with Ben Napoleon Wilson um, and him getting into an argument over what racism is in words right. and stuff. Yeah, there's history there. I think that the biggest issue here is that the fan base hates Russell Westbrook. Yeah. I, 
you would only be trading for him to buy him out. Yep. And you can't tell me that Russ would want to play here anyway. I guess that makes some sense, but you would you, you can't tell me that you're in a better spot if you trade for Russ, buy him out, and get two future firsts. That just doesn't equate you're to just value burning cash. Him. That's that's, that's, what, that that's would be. what that is. And I think that again, I've I've always been a big advocate for the concept that the Utah Jazz are not gonna do anything outlandish or wild. Danny Ainge is way too responsible. Danny Ainge has been through this before. He's not gonna misstep. And I think that's why you're not seeing the Donovan to the Knicks deal happen. If if this was you know, the the old regime, if you will, if this was Dennis Lindsay, I, I have no problem saying I do think he would make the deal that's currently on the table. I I, I do. I, I yeah. mean, when you, with all due respect, when you signed Rudy Gobert to that contract, you, you rubber stamped his trade happening. That's what you did by paying him that much money. So when we talk about, hey, would you make the deal with the Knicks in the old regime? Yes, you would. But that's what I'm saying. They're, they haven't made the deal. And I just don't see any situation where you would make the deal unless you get precisely what you're looking for. That's it right. just doesn't add up that you would compromise. Monty and Jake live at uh, Max Muscle Sports Nutrition in South Jordan. By the way, Riley is here. Yes. And he bought a box of my favorite Built Bar. Which What's your is favorite the, Built Bar? The orange cream puff thing. Yes. It is amazing. It's legit. It is. I'm telling you, if the only reason you come to Max Muscle in South Jordan is to get that, that one, and Riley probably bought every, no, they got two boxes sitting on the shelf. <laughs> orange puff. Thank you. Thank you. Because Caitlin, the owner of this store, um, who is Taylor's wife, I came in here a couple of weeks ago because she did an Instagram story. Right. That she showed that she had those, those uh, Built Bars. You guys, I'm telling you, they're life-changing. They are absolutely life-changing, that bar. Anyway, I just noticed he bought a bar. Yes. Smart yep. man. Yep. Uh, but I, I don't think it's a slam dunk that the Jazz make that deal. I really don't. I, I, I think if I had to go back and rate the, the Knicks, the possibility of a Knicks deal, I think every day we get further away from it. Mm -hmm. Honest to goodness, because if it is in fact true, if the rumors we hear every day are true that um, the Knicks continue to be frustrated, and I've, I've heard that from multiple people, that... Leon Rose is incredibly frustrated with Danny Ainge because this deal, frankly, should have been done already. If we're if we're dollars to donuts, the day that Rudy Gobert got traded was July 1st. If you mm -hmm. go back and watch that show that we did. Yes. We were talking to people during that show who said, hey, you should stay on the air. The, the Jazz are about to trade for DeAndre Ayton. Right. And that trade was close. And then that trade didn't happen. And there was a bit of a shift. And I, I think it's because Danny Ainge is impossible to negotiate with. The guy is an absolute witch to negotiate with. But why do you think that is? This is a really important point to me. Because I think he knows who he is and where his team Person, is. Exactly. And, and where I, he wants to go. It's important you know where you want to go. Yes. I think there is no doubt about that. I think Danny Ainge is well aware of what guys are valued at. And I agree with you. You consistently say on the show that Danny Ainge broke the NBA. I think he did. Yeah. I think the Rudy Gobert trade stopped the NBA trade market in its tracks. And I think the comment that I will never forget the day that Rudy Gobert got traded, a Jazz fan in the comments said, it's wild to see Danny Ainge working for the Jazz Dude. doing this. Dude. And it's wild to and, see Danny Ainge working for the Jazz doing this. And one thing you always say is that perception is reality. Yes. I don't think that the actual trade for Rudy Gobert and how that worked out, the value Danny got back, I think was justified. Uh, I don't think it was a ridiculous take, right? Uh, uh, more bots. Great. You know, will you handle that, please? I'm, 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 He's I'm handling, handling it, man. So I don't think that what the Jazz got back for Rudy actually was that ridiculous. But what I do think happened was... The league's perception of Rudy and what his value should have been is why Danny broke the market. Because, again, I think it's important that you understand, like, hey, I'm Danny Ainge. I'm the CEO of Basketball Ops at the Utah Jazz. I got to know who we are. I got to know that, hey, yeah. yeah, we are a bit of a secondary market. We aren't in L.A. or Chicago or New York or Boston. With that said, though, I know that Tim Connolly in Minnesota wanted Rudy Gobert when he was with Denver, and that yes. didn't happen. So that's a guy I know I can go and leverage to make the Gobert deal happen. So the point is, is that Danny Ainge operates at this super high level. And I think his mentality here is, what do I have to do to get Leon Rose or the New York Knicks to crack? What do I have to do? And I think we're in the middle of that process. So if you're a Utah Jazz fan today, be patient. I'm telling you, things will happen here. You will see trades happen, but it's going to take some time. Yeah, and I think one of the things that's so remarkable to me is that Danny Ainge just doesn't care about, about anything but winning. 
No. Winning a trade. I'm told I've never golfed with him, but I know a ton of people have golfed with Danny Ainge. He doesn't want to lose a single stroke on the golf course. He's incredibly competitive. I think that's the guy you want running your organization. Yeah. And, and this goes back to, and I know I've wavered back and forth, and a lot of people have called me out for this. I've wavered back and forth on Ryan Smith. Mm -hmm. I think Ryan Smith has a lot of proving to do. He's a rookie owner at this point. But one of the best moves that Ryan Smith made was hiring Danny Ainge. You got to hire people who know what you don't know. That was definitely you a know, win. Like, and I think Chris Karn and I have had this conversation in the yeah. past. You have to yeah. surround yourself with people who have done what you want to do and who are smarter than you, who can do the things and know how to do the things that you want to do. When you're a big time business guy like Ryan Smith, you've had success, but success in tech doesn't equate to success on the basketball floor. Mm -hmm. If you look at if you look at all the millionaires and billionaires that own teams in this league, most of them have had all kinds of success outside of it. Right. You've got to learn how to succeed if you're Elon Musk flying rocket ships is very different than building electric cars. If you are a guy like Ryan Smith, winning an NBA championship is quite different than building Qualtrics. But is it, putting together a TV deal quite different than running tech? But you know what? That's the thing. That's one of the things that really frustrates me about the Jazz is we don't have a streaming deal. We don't have a we don't have third tier content. We don't have a TV deal. But then Our, we're going to sit here and wonder why the state of Utah struggles with reputation. Why why is why is Utah <laughs> why are we why are we? It, it's kind of ridiculous to me that we have to have a conversation this morning earlier in the show about whether Florida State or or Miami is a more powerful program than Utah. What would Utah be? And I said this yesterday. What would Utah be if they had BYU's ESPN deal? What would the Utah Jazz be? Who would Donovan Mitchell be if Donovan Mitchell played on MSG Network or Yes Network as opposed to No Network? Who yeah. would he be? Look at the like, lift. That, look at the lift. You want to know a perfect example of this? Yeah. Look at Shohei Otani versus Aaron Judge. Great comparison. Shohei Otani plays in a tiny media market known as the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, mm -hmm. who are in this huge, huge regional area, right? Huge regional area. Los Angeles, they add the name to try and get LA, but Orange County on its own can power that. Yeah. Nobody watches them. Nobody, because they don't have a good TV deal. People don't watch the Angels. They watch Shohei Otani. And they watch the Dodgers yes. every single night, yes. right? So if you look at Aaron Judge... Aaron Judge is having, he is 39th home run last night, a, a, a solo shot walk-off on Yes Network. After you got, you know, two losses handed to you against the Mets. All over Twitter, all over Yes Network. If you're a Yankee fan and you have the Yes Network app, you got a, you got a notification on your phone. Yep. Shoei Otani is living an anonymous life in Anaheim. <laughs> Mike Trout has lived an anonymous life in Anaheim. The Utah Utes deserve more respect than they will ever get in the college football world. It's a power program. Yes. Perception is always of more value than reality. Yes. Always. If people think you're a jerk, you're a jerk, man. If, if people think you're the greatest guy in the world, you're the greatest guy in the world. Yeah. If people think that your brand is tiny in Utah, what is Utah? Oh, Utah's where all the Mormons are. That's what you routinely hear about Utah. Yes. Utah's a great state. And by the way, it sucks. Don't move here, please. Don't come here. <laughs> it's terrible. You well, come get here. your lotto ticket, but then go back to yeah, your state. Leave. You, know, you know what then I mean? Then leave, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but my point is, perception's reality, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I think when you look at the, the Utah Jazz, the perception is that this is a place where people don't want to play. Yeah. The perception is that, you know, uh, black professional athletes don't want to live in Salt Lake City. And I can tell you that's just not the, the reality but the perception is far more powerful than there's, the reality. There's a question in the comments here from from Alex Chacon, which I think we should put on the screen because I think it's a really uh, relevant question. First of all, Teddy Wayman, thank you oh, so hey, much Teddy. for the $10 tip. He says, wish I could make it, guys. Unfortunately, I'm at a customer's house tiling. Appreciate the show. Well, thanks for listening while you tile, man. Yeah, thanks, Teddy. Thanks Appreciate you, man. Appreciate and, you. and by the way, Teddy, here's the promise I'll make you. If I have an extra mega ticket, it's yours, man. We'll hook up. I'll find you over the weekend or something. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Alex Chacon says, does our small market make it harder uh, to make a TV and streaming deal? No, it doesn't. If I can make a streaming deal, and I shouldn't, you know, give away the milk. Yeah, and not you, yeah, the cow you need to chill out. All right, just chill out. If we can make a streaming deal, if the Denver Nuggets can have the Altitude Sports Network, well, look at BYU as an independent, and I, and again, we're not BYU fans, go. but I think it's a really fair example. You know, BYU in the state of Utah, not in LA, not in Chicago, not in Boston. 
they thrive through independence. Yes. Like, it, it, it can be done and, frankly, should be done. And, frankly, I would expect Ryan Smith to to get it done. I, I can't emphasize this yeah. enough. This little thing right here, our cell phones, are the way to go now. People watch you, on their phone, man. Thank hey, you, buddy. see you, man. Good to see you again. Yeah, I agree with you. Like the you phone have is to the be phone on, is the You world. have to be on the phone, and it just is amazing to me that, that the Utah Jazz haven't gotten anything done yet. Uh, if it's AT&T, Sportsnet, Rocky Mountain, High, or John Denver, or whatever, I, I will be incredibly frustrated if that's where we have to watch basketball games again. And I just... I just don't believe is, that you can't get a deal done with anybody, like with YouTube or with... You know, uh, anything. Something. There has to be something. Lord Raiden says, if you if you can make a streaming deal, okay, make all the deals you want. What the hell is going to, wh who the hell is going to watch? There isn't a national demand. See, I think I quality disagree, basketball man. makes a national demand. Yeah. Danny Ainge is creating national demand. There's never been more interest in the Utah Jazz than there is right now. Yeah. There, there just has never been. You know, I I just can't believe that's the situation. Eric Romali says, hey, guy, I missed the announcement. Would you kindly recap? Yes, go ahead. We'll recap in 15 minutes. Okay. How about that? At 8 o'clock when we make our other announcement, we'll recap all the news. But, yeah, Eric and Raleigh, absolutely we will. Gabe Ledley says, uh, swear to dog, you guys better not be going back to Twitch. <laughs> Come on, Listen, Gabe. Listen, we all Gabe, do Gabe, things. Gabe. We try things. We're good. We found our home. It's not Twitch. I promise you that. Uh, the Nye guy says, Tanner, everything remains to be seen. Let's see. Tanner says, uh, well, that remains to be seen. Well, you know what? I think, I, I guess the question here is, do you trust Ryan Smith? I mean, he hasn't given me a reason not to trust him. But he hasn't given you a reason to trust him. Yeah. You know, we were looking very at different things. Like, I think that the, the Danny Ainge thing was a win. The, the Jersey was reveal. A win. The Jersey reveal. It, you know. We caught some heat for how negative we were about the jersey reveal, specifically myself. But I just think there was an egregious misstep with that. I, I look who at, did a, who I did look something at, the other day? I look at what Notre Dame did with their yes, white and gold Notre jersey Dame. for the for the Vegas drive away thing, and yo, I just yo. say, hey, like, why are the Utah Jazz not doing things like that? Like, you're you're a professional franchise, man. You have everything you could ever want in a, in a video department, in like resources. Like I'm not trying to be harsh, but there's just not a there's not an excuse. There's not a reason why it shouldn't have been done. But let's stop saying that the Utah Jazz are a basketball organization because they're not. Yeah, this is a great this the, is a great point. The Utah Jazz are a a sales organization who makes money through content that centers around the basketball team. Yeah, if they win games, great. You can sell out buildings with crappy basketball teams. You can make money on crappy basketball teams. Uh -huh. But you have to be a sales organization, a revenue-generating organization first. A machine. We, we work at a massive tech company that is not about reviews. It's about revenue generation mm -hmm. for businesses, for themselves, for consumers. Mm -hmm. You have to understand what you do for a living. The Utah Jazz do not play basketball for a living. Donovan Mitchell plays basketball for a living. Yeah. The Utah Jazz create revenue through sales on content. That's what they do. You're not, you don't have content on TV, so your national brand suffers. Mm -hmm. You don't have content on people's cell phones, so your national brand suffers. You're not in the NBA app, so your brand suffers. The, the Jersey thing, the whole Jersey thing, Right. the problem is whether the Jersey was ugly or not, or you liked it or hated it, it doesn't matter. If you'd have made fire content around that, if you would have done a week of hype videos, if you would have done a live event where you had all kinds of luminaries coming out to reveal that jersey yeah. that would have lived on your YouTube all channel and YouTube your social. All the names you can think of. That ESPN would have played. Because ESPN played the Notre Dame jersey reveal thing the yes. other day. Notre Dame did this thing on um, the three best friends any man could have. Oh, yeah, from the hangover. hangover. From the original they, Hangover movie. Notre yes. Dame did a spoof of the Hangover movie to reveal their jersey. ESPN played because it. it's Las Vegas. There's synergy. It makes sense. I think MSNBC played it like all of these people played Notre Dame's video. It was all over Twitter everywhere. How come the jazz didn't get that? Now, is it because they're not Notre Dame? Sure. Okay. It plays into that. But if you'd have made a video like that, or if you'd have made but some I think fire that's a mindset content, thing, man, it that's is a, a mindset like, thing. Okay. You're not Notre Dame, obviously, but you're the Utah jazz. Look, like, but what do you think you are matters? Jake, I'm fat, but I run around like I got a six pack of abs because <laughs> that's what, you know, Anyway, yeah. the point is, that's what I'm saying.
let's see what you guys are saying. Um, Zayman says, BYU ain't no leftover. What did Raiden say? See, I'm something. behind on the Raiden comments said today. Something. I'm a little behind on it, but we'll, we'll see. Um, Daniel Westover says, I live in Tennessee and I hate how hard it is to get jazz games. I would buy a streaming package that got me every game with no you blackouts see what I mean? in a second. You see what yes. I mean? Yes. Lord Raiden says, I'm talking uh, from the Midwest. I teach in high school. All they talk about is the NBA. The Jazz aren't on the radar. That's why I'm saying there's no national demand or buzz. But I think what plays into that is you don't have a streaming deal. How That's much right. is that hurting you? How much is you know Utah trying to get to the Big Ten? How much is them not having a distribution package? hurting them like that's the thing like you, you have to get yourself out there and not to keep going back to byu but byu is a gold standard and why is that because byu tv byu sports nation byu byu i mean it's Radio. almost it's almost obsessive right? like how much they do but you know yeah. who they are like them or hate them you know where they're at do you remember Taysom jumping over the texas longhorns oh yes what i do they did with that <laughs> the way they spun that um, their social they, BYU was in their was in their social media stuff long before most people were. Yes, that's what I want from Utah. That's yeah. what I want from, and I mean the Utah Utes, the Utah Jazz. That's what I want from those folks. Like it's yeah. one of those things where if I can get that from BYU, I know I can get that from the Utah Jazz. I know. Thank you. I know I can get that from from people. That's what I want. Yes. Royce just walked in the building from Deseret Carpet and Furniture Cleaners. Furniture Cleaners. Hey. Hey, Royce. Let's go. Good to see you, Thank friend. you for coming. Um, I think one of the that's one of the things that's severely lacking. Yeah. Is that you don't have all this other content. And you can hate BYU all you want, and I know they catch their fair share of grief. I'm telling you right now, nobody does what BYU does as well as BYU does it. And I other think I think the other thing here is that you're not in LA. Like you're not in some major market where you inherently no. have the eyeballs on your product. That's the thing. Yeah, I think it's interesting. What do we have here? This is Monty. We have a so submission. I gotta give a shout out to Robin. Um, they gave actually a live tip. Wow. What? So that's super sweet. It brought wow. you on his takes. Oh, wow. That's really nice. Robin walked in and gave Mrs. Monty an envelope with a $20 bill in it. That's awesome. Thank you. That we is appreciate very that, nice Robin. of you. See, <clears throat> that's what's awesome. That's very humbling that's amazing. Like, that's, that's amazing, you guys. Thank you. Robin, you're the best. Thank you so much. Um, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, all of this to say, I do trust Ryan Smith. I think he's going through a learning curve. Nine minutes until we make Nine our minutes. announcement. Nine minutes. Is what I would say. Let me get some comments in here. Uh, m whoa, another Monty. Monty Pritchett. Brett Yorkman's first day is August 3rd. Nothing will happen until at least Thursday at the earliest. Yeah, that's probably true, Monty. I think there's been a lot of that. They are transitioning commissioners in the Big 12. Brett Yorkman uh, is the uh, new incoming commissioner of the Big 12. So we'll see what happens on August 3rd. But I, I got to believe those, whatever they're going to do or announce, I got to believe those Here's deals are in place. You don't have time to, to, to wait. Like, yes, you're right. Nothing will probably be announced until he starts. I totally agree with that. But things are in motion. Things are moving. Things are happening. Because what's ha what, what is really happening right now in college football? The Big 10, the Big 12, yep. they're competing for the premier brands that are coming out of the Pac-12. That's yep. what's happening. You can't fall behind. Totally agree with that. We are live at Max Muscle Sports Nutrition in South Jordan. Uh, make sure you come see us. 3595 South Jordan Parkway in uh, South Jordan. We'll be here, I don't know, probably till 9-something. Um, we don't really have we, we don't, don't have an really out time. That's the beautiful thing about uh, YouTube. We go until we don't. Um, you can register live and in person for the BYU uh, Notre Dame drive away to see them uh, in the Shamrock Series at Allegiant Stadium October seventh and eighth. Yep. Brought to you by our good friends uh, at Academy Mortgage, Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage, and now Barbecue Pit Stop. Yes. Barbecue Pit Stop, our latest uh, partner on the show. Um, they are uh, presenting the BYU Notre Dame driveway. That is going to be amazing. On, on September 17th, we're going to do the uh, watch party at Barbecue Pit Stop in Lehigh for uh, Oregon and BYU in Eugene. And at halftime of that game, we're going to draw the winner. So we'll have wings, we'll have pizza, we'll have all kinds of stuff for you at that uh, watch party at Barbecue Pit Stop um, in Lehigh on... Um, uh, to, or excuse me, September 17th. I was yes. distracted. No, you're all right. So, you're good. And coming up in seven minutes, we have a big announcement for you. So stick around for that. By the way, we do have Mega Millions tickets. 
as well here for you. Just walk in, they're free. You don't need to, to do anything. Uh, Tanner Plummer says, Royce just walked in the building. Royce O'Neill, LOL. Just kidding. No, Royce is in Miami training. By the way, anybody see Donovan Mitchell back with his personal trainer I'm in Miami? I'm telling you, dude. Guy's coming. He's going to... Uh, he. My opinion is that Donovan Mitchell is going to average 30 points a game the first half of the season. I, I will go to sleep with that. Tanner, uh, the Nye guy says, Tanner, Royce did not, uh, did try to make it, but he missed the building and ended up somewhere else. Yeah. Well, no, he did. He wanted to be here. He just wouldn't shoot his shot. And st never, I'll stop. Yeah. Uh, Tanner says, dang it, Nye guy, Jake and Mont will never meet their hero now. Yeah. You know? Buckets on bench. What Buckets can I say? Buckets on bench. Uh, <laughs> Buckeye in Texas says, and yet... Here you are hoping anybody will take the Utes. I'm not hoping for anything. I think it's, it is, I don't think there's hope or desperation. The Utah Utes are going to get into the Big 12. Yeah. I have, I have no doubt about that. The, the Utah Utes will get into the Big 12. If I, if I was a betting man, that's where I would place my ducats. Right. I would say that the, the, the Utes are getting into the Big 12. And uh, Buckeye in Texas, I would just ask you, where do you think they end up? I mean, you, you if you're a Buckeye, you're, you're in the driver's seat. You're in the biggest, baddest revenue-generating conference yep. um, in the Big Ten right now. That's the hottest uh, conference in the country. I uh, My guess is the Big Ten's not interested in, in Utah. So my guess is Utah's going to end up in the Big 12. Yeah. Because can, can we also please stop with the Mountain West thing? I get it, BYU fan. It's cool to say, oh, well, Utah's going back to the Big West. Mountain West. That little team up north. Stuff. Yeah, those little guys up north. <laughs> I totally understand that. Yeah. They're not going to the Mountain West. I feel like as a BYU fan, you almost have a responsibility to give it back to Utah right now. Is there anybody that wants to join Craig Thompson's con conference? No, nah, I'm good. You know. No, nah, I'll pass. Uh, Gene Stream Gamer says, Monty's got some cool tattoos. Wish I could have one. Well, come to the States sometime. Uh, Lord Radon says, Big 10 and Big 12 are competing for packed teams. I think you mean the Big 10 took what they wanted and the Big 12 is getting the leftovers. Look, I, look, I don't look, disagree with that. Uh, well, well. I don't. Yeah, well. The big, the, listen, listen, man, the Big 10's writing listen, the checks dude, right now. Listen, bro. They took USC and UCLA. That's what you have. Yeah, USC, so far. everybody says, oh, well, USC is going to make this resurgence, which I totally agree with. What is UCLA? A nothing burger. A basketball nothing, team. Nothing, dude. Nothing in football. They are a basketball school, but they're not certainly the front runners in basketball. But you would have to agree that if, if the Big Ten called Oregon today and said, hey, why don't you join our conference? You're going. If they called Washington. You're yeah, going. You're going. I don't right? disagree. I'm not sitting here saying the Big Ten is somehow a lesser conference than the Big 12, but I'm not going to sit here and agree with is that anybody who's not named USC and UCLA are leftovers. I'm not agreeing with that. I think I think Oregon, yeah. Yeah, Utah, Washington have all had a better past five to ten year period than SC has had. Like I, I ever since you know, you go back to the Bush P. Carroll thing, since then, what has USC been? They've been, oh, they're going to be good this year. They got Jackson Dart. They've they, got these, You know what like, they've been? You know? They've been a lot of head coaches. Yeah. They have fired coaches on the tarmac. Yeah. They've been Lane Kiffin. They, I mean, they, they have struggled. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Sark at his worst. Like, they, USC has really struggled. Yeah. All my, I agree with you. If, if you are Oregon, Washington, and Utah, you have nothing to apologize for. Yeah. Those are three very good football programs. Now, Washington's fallen on tough times. But we'll see. Uh, Monty Pritchett also says, it seems as if Arizona and Utah have more urgency to leave California Pac-12 schools than CU and ASU. Colorado admin thinks the Big 12 as a JUCO conference. I think Colorado dramatically overvalues itself based on their prowess yeah. as an educational institution. You want to say If you want to say Colorado is a leftover, okay, I can agree with that. I don't think that Colorado has the power that a Utah or an Oregon There's or... just no reason to do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's no reason to 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 pound teams like Colorado or everybody's got value and everybody's got priorities. And yeah. they, most of the time, this is why we don't talk a lot of politics on this show because most of the time, views don't align and people get upset. That's what's happening in college football realignment. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right, three minutes until yep, we make minutes. an announcement. Patrick Bourne says, correct, US, USC, UCLA, not even in the same ballpark as Oregon and Utah recently. Yeah, not that's at what all. I, that, but, but not again, at I, all. I think it works both ways. So I want to be really clear. Right now, here today, I think Utah... Oregon and a distant third in Washington are more valuable than SC and UCLA. Now that said, I'm not going to agree with the idea that SC has no value because they haven't been good recently. SC is a coin flip away from being a college football 
playoff contender like every single year. And they've done that. They've made changes. They've done the tough thing. So that's why I say I think that you just you just got to work through this period. I, I My biggest thing here, you know, to finish off the college football thing is that I just hope that, you know, the Pac-12 today comes out and has any Wait, semblance of a plan. Two minutes. Two minutes left in the period. Two, two minutes. minutes. Two minutes. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I hope that the Pac-12, I hope George Klyovkov, the commissioner of the Pac-12, yeah. gets up on that stage today and has a plan. Yeah. Uh, because I, I do think it would be a shame, and I do think it would be bad for college football if the Pac-12 goes away. Mm -hmm. I think it would be... All the money that was wasted and dumped into the Pac-12, it, it, to have it be a complete waste is it would be really disappointing. It'd but be that's really a real possibility. At it this is point. a very real possibility. Like that's, that's we're not far from that. The the way it just is unnecessary. Agreed. It is, it is unnecessary. I just don't see. But again, you see what happens when you don't have TV money coming in, Ryan Smith. You see what happens when you don't have TV money coming in. One minute. Utah, Pac-12, one minute. One minute remaining in the period. Yes. Um. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. So we are live at Max Muscle Sports Nutrition in South Jordan, uh, hanging out with all the boys. It's great to see everybody. It is it is just so much fun to be out and meet you guys. I, I, I cannot say enough how appreciative we are of what you guys are doing and supporting this show. The last, the last year has been remarkable for this show. And I know that, you know, we, we reap a lot of the benefits of you guys showing up at places like Max Muscle, calling yep. Devery Davis uh, at Academy Mortgage, dealing with guys like Barbecue Pit Stop, our newest partner on the show. But there, there is winds of change coming. So now that it is 8 o'clock. Yes. Um, no time left in the period. Make the announcement. Um, so today we go all in on this show. And as many of you know, we have like full-time jobs. Well, we did until today. Yeah. Um, so today is our fond farewell to our good friends at the Yelpatory. Yep. Um, we are leaving Yelp. And Yelp has been, and, and I think this is really important because when I joined Yelp three years ago, I was a much different seller. I was a, I've always been able to sell things. Um, frankly, I've been the ice to the Eskimo guy, right? Right, right. I've always been able to sell. But the things that I learned, the people that I met, the experience that I've had working at Yelp, I have made incredible money. I have been a top producer at Yelp. Um, I've been very fortunate that Yelp pays their people very well. Yelp has been great for my family. I mean, you're, you're a schlep rock, so you know, you, you, I know. you yeah. struggle. Yeah, I know. You know. You're not as good as I am, kid. No, I'm kidding. We'll make but it. But you've made we'll incredible make money. We've both yeah. been top producers Listen, at dude, Yelp. Yelp, it's been Yelp a good has been ride. great. I'd recommend it to anybody, but the fact is, it's time to move on. And so today is our last day at Yelp. And what that means is this is our full-time gig now. So we're doing this show three hours. Starting on Monday, we're going to do this show for three hours every day. Um, as you have figured out over the last couple of weeks, thank you, we are bringing sponsors yes. onto the show. We are bringing partners onto the show. And we have a lot of things coming for you. Um, Frankly, the month of August and September is pretty much going to be about announcements and growth and things that we're doing on the show. Mm -hmm. But this is now what we do. So we appreciate you guys' support, but we need you now more than we ever have needed you to watch the show, to interact with people like Taylor at Max Muscle, to, you know, to come out and see Barbecue Pit Stop, go to the counters at Barbecue Pit Stop starting on, on Monday. Every yeah. Barbecue Pit Stop in the Valley is going to have an enter to win box for BYU and Notre Dame. Um, so please make sure you go in and say, hey, I heard about you guys on the Monty Show. I want to enter to win that contest. And check out their seasonings, by the way, not to cut <laughs> you off. Their seasoning game is strong. Yeah, so Steve, the owner of Barbecue Pit Stop, the other day we're in there and he's like, by the way, I know you guys, uh, like, do you guys like vegetables? <laughs> like he literally said, hey, do you guys like vegetables? I was like, well, my wife's a vegetarian. so Which pretty much you know, makes pretty you much a vegetarian. Makes me a vegetarian yeah. too. Yeah. And he gave us like this great batter for cauliflower and he gave us all kinds of seasoning and yeah. stuff. But that's what you get at Barbecue Pit Stop. You get that personal level of service. So we need you to like go and support yeah, our sponsors. Out. Because every day I think you're going to see every week on the show, there's going to be new partners to a certain extent. But what's going to happen on this show this fall Mm -hmm. is is going to it's going to be crazy it, it the look and feel of our show is going to change significantly um 
And it starts today because now that we're into this full time, like we have time to fully now develop the show. We have time to fully, you know, build programs and prize packages and contests for you guys to enter and win for supporting the show. Yes. It just all the game changes on this show today. Yes. So we appreciate you guys being here. Give us a thumbs up. That really helps the show grow. Hit subscribe. That really helps the show grow. Yes. Um, but this is just the beginning. And so I, I just want to, again, say thanks to everybody at Yelp. I know a ton of people at Yelp um, watch the show, support the show. Um, the way I describe Yelp is it's been a tremendous season of my life. Yes. And now that season comes to an end. Yeah. And, and a new season starts. Like yes. I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah. It, I mean, look, I, I think what I would say is that, you know, working. The thing is, is when you work the nine to five grind, you know, uh, I would tell people that, you know, don't you got to dream big. Like, yes, work your nine to five. But don't just get stuck there. There's this next step that I feel like a lot of us aren't able to take because we get lost in the minutia of the day. Yes. Like take advantage of your nine to five. Maybe you're maybe you're not in sales. Like whatever your nine to five is, use that thing, put some money away, and then invest in your idea or your concept to get to that next level. Because that's all we've done. We're not special or unique. We're not no. different from what you guys can do. And I just think that, you know, again, it needs to be said. And, and again, I know that you hear this all the time, and I'm not trying to be corny, but like, you guys listening and coming out to, you know, Max Muscle and everything that you do makes what we do possible. Literally. Thanks, Royce. If, if, thank you, Royce. Appreciate you. If you don't, if Royce doesn't come out, we're not doing what we do. And that's just the facts. We're not. Again, there's been this huge debate over the last three years about, you know, like the radio platform versus streaming. We're not on the radio. We're no. streaming. It's a different game now. And so I just wanted to personally say thank you to everybody. And the best way I can describe it is Q4. We'll be big. That's all hey, I can good say. To thank see you, man. you. Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah, I, I think it is. It's incredibly humbling. And I also want to say a lot of people have asked me, you know, hey, why, you know, have you been planning this? Actually, we haven't been. Yeah. Actually, we haven't been. And you know what's interesting is we talk so much. Lopes Van Gave and I had a conversation offline the other day about, um, you know, the things that we always talk about on this show. Like, and one of the <laughs> things he pointed out was, hey, you know what you always say about paychecks? Well, it's true. Paychecks are the drug they give you to make you forget your dreams. Yes. And it's very comfortable without saying exactly how much I make at Yelp. I I made incredible money, like stupid money. Yeah. At Yelp. Yep. That's it's it's not the it's not the most comfortable feeling to walk away from that. And that this is a big day in our life. We this is walking the walk. We always tell you guys, "Hey man, you need to work for yourself. You need yes. to do you." You need to be fearless. You, you got to be Taylor Max and, Muscle. You got to be, yes. you know, you got to be the guy at the barbecue Steve pit at, stop. At, at barbecue pit you got to be Devery at Academy Mortgage. Yeah. You know? And that that's kind of the theme of things that we're going through. You look at people who have done their own thing. Chris Carnu, again, is standing here, does his own thing. Yes. Like, you have all these people that listen to our show, and we've told you, hey, do your own thing. So it would be kind of hypocritical for us to not do our own thing. Yes. So, no, we haven't really been planning this over the last couple of days, like over the last six, eight, 10 weeks, a lot of things came together to make this yes. possible. Yes. Um, a lot of things happened to make this possible. And over the next six weeks, we're going to explain a lot more of those things for you. Um, and it, I think it's going to blow your mind when you figure out the things that we're doing, when we explain very exciting to times, you, very exciting times, it'll blow your mind. I very mean, exciting. I, I can't, what I, what, I just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can't say enough about the support that you guys give us. All right. Brandon Whiteside says, congratulations. Let's do this. TJ McVay says, congrats, guys. Looking forward to three hours. Thank yes. you. Colton Bitten says, congrats, guys. Let's go. Thank you. Brady Cook says, congrats, guys. I'm excited to see what else you guys are going to do. Also, best show in uh, sports show in the nation. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Colton Bitten says, party at Monty's tonight. Hot tub sesh. My guy, every night's a party at Monty's. <laughs> um, <laughs> Eric Raleigh says, football at 50, Monty forever. Hey, that, See, but things like that, that's some of the stuff, man. That's, I mean, I, and I really appreciate that, com uh, that comment, Eric. You have been listening to us for, since Years. we were doing this show on a, on a phone in, in, you know, some random room. Like, I think I first started tweeting with Eric when I worked at the great KMBR 680 in San Francisco. Yeah, so that, so, what is that? 10 years over 10 years yeah i mean yeah. I, I but yeah those are the type of things that we're gonna be able to do now david c wants to know how long before we start hosting sports center on espn 
We're not going to ESPN. The big show. Uh, <laughs> Rene Rocha says, best of luck to you guys. I did the same thing. Saved money, built a steady clientele and relationships, and went into business for myself. Every yes. day is a hustle, yes. but there's nothing better. That's right. Yes. That's right, Rene. That's exactly yes. right, Rene. Uh, SLCP Shooter. Hey, good to see you, man. Where you been? Says, uh, will you guys be getting press credentials? <sighs> That's an interesting question. That's maybe, an interesting maybe question. Maybe not. And, and, well, you know, the, the thing about our show that separates us from just about everybody else is we're independent. Like, yeah. we, don't have, we don't have to answer to Ryan Smith on any level. We don't have to answer to Tom Homo. We don't have to answer. Thank you. We don't mm -hmm. have to answer to Tom Homo. We don't have to answer to any of these guys. Yes. We are truly independent. We are not affiliated with any. We are the truth in, in Utah sports, man. Yeah. We, we, we are not going to give you sugar-coated stuff. So the credential thing is interesting because we've been able to build a network of relationships that have, has meant that we don't have to be in the arena to talk to people. Yeah. So it, it Which is pretty incredible if you think about it. It's interesting that relationship, but yeah, I, I, I would, I would. The answer is yeah, I would think so. Uh, Rhino reselling says, "Hey y'all, Baylor fan here. How? Wow, I picked a great day to tune in for the first time. Congratulations, you have a new subscriber in me. I watch 365 Sports every day. Now I can add this one, Rhino. Thank you, dude. Man. It's so funny you bring up 365. We were just talking about them the other day uh, because of you know Big Ten Media Day and all that stuff in that conversation. That's a great outlet, and I think the, the 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 thing is 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 yeah man you did pick a great day this show is i'm i'm just gonna keep saying it q4 be here that's all i'm gonna say talking with Raphael podcast says are you guys extending the no sports segment or spread it evenly um we always do non-sports stories of the day at the end of the show um and it usually it just depends that's on up for conversation i think that that's something that we're we're working on the structure of the show and and how we'll go about doing the show now that we again now that we have more time now that we don't have to say hey like we can only do 90 minutes because we got to go to the elpatory now that that's over for us and we have the full three hours you may see a little bit of structure built into the show you may see you know we used to do a segment as eric was saying football 50 like they're married there's gonna there's probably to be honest with you yes there will probably be a lot more structure in the show just because we have to with our partners and you know we, we just want to make sure we do a good quality show that serves everybody that's the name of the game yeah um we, eric jokes about football 50 we're doing football 50 in about well that'll probably start in two weeks yeah um once we get closer to the end of training camp and you know fall camp for utah and byu we'll absolutely be doing football 50 yes and again if you're just tuning in we're also doing uh one of the things we're also doing is football saturday which is an hour-long pregame show uh, before the earliest kickoff. So Utah yes. and BYU, whoever plays earlier, will do it an hour before. And again, we'll be at Barbecue Pit Stop September 17th in Lehigh doing a watch party for Oregon and BYU and Eugene. And on that day, we will announce the winner of the BYU-Notre Dame drive-away, where you get two tickets to the game, uh, you get two nights at the Palms Hotel and Casino, and yep. you get $250 in a gas card to drive away to that game. It's all brought to you by our good friend Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage, Barbecue Pit Stop as well. On Monday, you'll be able to go into every Barbecue Pit Stop and fill out an Enter to Win form. Uh, that's going to be the only way you get to, to enter that contest. So uh, that all starts on Monday. Uh, <laughs> no, Zayman. Tra traffic and weather together every nine minutes on the floors. On BYU Radio. Exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, Dallin Sproul says, been watching for a while, but I don't comment a lot. I love how you guys always keep it real. Big things to come. Thanks, Dallin. Thank you. Thank you, Dallin. Good to see you. Cody Strickland uh, says, yes, press credentials. That's what we need you guys to ask real questions. Appreciate that. Uh, we'll see about that. William gives us a $2 tip and says, this is my new favorite show. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. that. Um, Tanner Plummer replying to James Knight. We were getting a lot of comments, so I, I'm sorry, James. Where are you, man? Um, I didn't mean to miss you. James is one of our best listeners, too, by the way. Uh, let's see. Jazz Preach 1 says, local radio shows will suffer. LOL. Good on you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, we're not, that. We're not in the business of other people suffering. We're in the business of doing a great show for you guys. You know, that's what Joe, I say. Joe Kerr says the Pac-12 commissioner does a Bud Dwyer at the press conference. We'll see, man. We'll see. That's that's about 90 minutes away, so I'm looking forward to that. DJ Lopez says, anything new on the Jazz today? Um, just that it, it appears... One of the, the interesting questions is, who are the players coming back to the Jazz? Because as the days have gone on, the Knicks have not wanted to give up Quentin Grimes in this deal. And I just, I don't see how, if you're the Are Jazz. Are you not doing a Donovan Mitchell deal over Quentin Grimes? 
Um, man, I'm not. You see what I mean? I, I like, would. <laughs> I would give up I, again. I give up quickly. Grimes and four first round picks for Donovan Mitchell. If I'm the Knicks, that's the deal I'm making. But if you're walking away from the Jazz, like if you're the Knicks and you walk away from the the Utah Jazz, where are you going? What's the next thing? Because I don't. Yeah. I also think you know something that doesn't get talked a lot about uh, with the Knicks is that is that what is the alternative to not doing the Donovan Mitchell deal? Because I agree, I wouldn't be giving up six first round picks. You know, three of those being unprotected, four players. Like you're you're giving your organization to Danny Ainge. That's what you're doing. So I, I would walk away from that, but the problem is is I, I don't know what your other options are, and that's kind of the thing that I struggle with. Like for Danny Ainge, he doesn't need to have other options. No. If you if you don't trade Donovan Mitchell, you're definitely going to trade Bogey and Mike, and I, I hope they don't trade J.C., but I could kind of see a lot of teams asking about J.C. So, like, you already have <laughs> Bro, three other guys. if you're trading Donovan... You're trading everybody. Well, if, but I'm saying if you keep Donovan, if you're you keep trade. Donovan, you have to keep Jordan Clarkson. I agree. I think you can trade everybody else. But to your point, if you're keeping Donovan, you're you're not fully rebuilding. I don't know. You're the bottom line is on the bottom line on the Knicks is yesterday we heard again that Leon Rose is frustrated with Danny Ainge because he feels like a deal should have been done already. Wow. So uh, Arlington Bears. Uh, says, does this make Mrs. Monty the sugar mama? It does. <laughs> As of, oh, wow. She's paying the bills, bro. As of today, Mrs. Monty makes far more than I make. Far more than I make. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Bourne says, also just described as a Baylor fan. Love the new Big 12 and the awesome competition our conferences has. Um, thank see you, Chris. Chris thank, thank you for you. being here. Uh, we'll have, as compared to the Super 2, which is the bottom heavy. I agree. Patrick Bourne, that's exactly right. I agree with you 100%. Uh, Gene Stream Gamer says, working and hustling to provide food on our table. I want to quit, but I can't. I wanted to end myself, but Monty told me today is not the day to die. That's exactly right. And I appreciate you sharing. I think that... I, I think appreciate that you sharing. That's the, a real conversation, by the way. Yeah. So what I would say about that is I think that it is hard. It is difficult. It is It is a. It is a difficult path to to walk we just had a conversation the other day about how mortgage rates just went up and inflation and all this stuff is happening and everything costs more and it's a struggle right now it is a struggle right now yes it is but i also think that that you know it the conversation can't just be hey i, I don't want to work at my nine to five because i want to do this thing that's not the only portion you have to say Damn. okay I don't want to work at the nine to five. I want to do this thing, but what's the plan? What yeah. is what is my path? How can I accomplish that? And listen, you know, Gene Stream Gamer, I, I and I had a real conversation offline, and I've had this conversation with like five or six people recently. It's just one day at a time, and for a lot of people, it's every ten minutes. You just got to put one foot in front of the other because yeah, guess what? Today is not the day to die. And that's ultimately... Today is not the day you're dying. Dude, I'll be honest with you guys. Like part of the motivation to do three hours is is we know that, you know, you guys follow us. You guys support us. So like I was saying, like, I'm not just saying it to say it. Like because you guys watch us and follow us and support the channel, that's why we're doing more. That that enables us to do more. So I just think that, you know, it have a goal. But then think about, all right, what's that first step I can take? Maybe you can't put together a whole plan. Maybe there are too many X factors. Yes. Just take that first step. Just put one foot in front That's of the other. It. That's, That's it. That's literally man. it, and, man. And again, if you are struggling and you are thinking about ways to end your life, take that really seriously and please get help. Reach out to me. I'm always open to talk to people. Um, I know that there's a lot of people struggling. And Gene Stream, I appreciate you reaching out to me that day, man. I appreciate the conversation we had. By the way, did you get your shirts yet? If you don't get your shirts in a week, let me know. I'll send you more. Yeah, like, we'll get more. Uh, it, we'll send and more. I know it takes forever to get stuff sent to the Philippines, but I we've had to resend some shirts out to Australia and the Philippines because sometimes they get lost. Yeah. We sent you two shirts. If you don't get them within another week or so, I would say let's send you two more. Because uh, I want to make sure you get them. So Gene Stream, good to see you. James Knight says yes. Let's stop leading off. Um, Oh, wow. How about this story? Charles Barkley will not be joining Live Golf. Good choice, sir. Good choice. Um, Good choice. Barkley says he is sticking with broadcasting the NBA and TNT, and he is going to rebuff any further um, inquiries from Live Golf. Yeah, I, look. How about I, so, that? so to finish James Knight's thing here, because I don't want to just ignore him, right? Number yes. one, he said, yes, stop leading off with football. Here's the thing, James. I would encourage you to get more into football because this is going to be a football show 
as we come into football season. It's just yes. it, in the states that's just how it is. We're not going to top stop talking Utah Jazz basketball. We will, but things will shuffle depending on what time of year it is in the state. <laughs> Look at Justin Salas. He gives us a $5 tip. Justin, longtime listener. Appreciate you, bud. He says, I'll pay you to talk about Utah State. Need some updates on my Aggies. The little brother needs some attention every now and then. <laughs> well, you know, back in the day when uh, it was uh, Gunther and Ben and Monty in the morning, and we used to have um, the coach at Utah State on every week. Yeah. And he was not kind. He was. <laughs> and people used to get so upset that we would ask like tough questions of the coach at Utah State. Yeah. We got so many Aggie tears over that one interview that we did. Aggie tears, I love it. And then they would not give us players. Yeah. They would not allow us like it yeah. was it was incredible. Dude, what's hey, up? Hey. hey, looking sharp today. They named a resort How after Aria. What's going on? Awkward what's up, dude? fist bump and slap. <laughs> How about that? How about that, my guy? You know what? We have great friends. Arya is a really good friend of ours. He lives he lives right next to us, and he is guy. So you guys may know that like yard work is hard. He has got this behemoth of a yard, and a front yard. A so front there's, yard. A, there's accountability yeah. in this, and like he just put in this beautiful fence. Yeah, and, like yeah. I I bought a townhouse because I didn't want to do yard work, and yard work is hard work man. Like, I, I don't know how he does. It was so funny. Him and his beautiful wife were out front of their house the other day planting a bush after we went on this hike and it was hot. And Arya's like, please talk to me so I don't have to dig this hole right now. <laughs> it was Check amazing. Out, coach. You know, the other funny thing is Arya is another entrepreneur. Yes, a guy that's dude. Doing for himself. Yes, yes. He was telling me that his gardener broke a water line at his house. The worst. It was the worst. The and one night worst. we were being total jerks about this because we were sitting in our hot tub in our backyard, and it's raised our hot tub, and you can see their yard from our backyard. And their their landscaper was running around their house, <laughs> like the outside of the house, like, oh, God. And we were like, oh, God, something's wrong. <laughs> and then we yeah. found out they broke a water line. But, you know, who, who's texting you? Nobody. Uh, nice. I'm, on, I'm on Twitter replying to people. Nice. Riley O'Brien tweeting at us. Riley, you're great, dude. Thanks, dude. I appreciate, I appreciate you. But you, man. Good to see everybody, man. Yes. We really appreciate you guys coming out. So, Justin, I promise you we will mix in some. Uh, why don't you be our, our Utah State insider, man? What, like once every 17 months, we'll, we'll do some Utah State. And you, okay, 18 months. We'll, you know, I'm kidding. Justin, of course we will. Uh, Lord Radon says Mountain West Conference would be the worst case for Utah. Come on. They're, nobody's going to Craig Thompson's freaking mullet, bro. I think that's Utah, not happening. Utah, Utah is going to the Big 12. I that That's just the inevitability. Yeah, but I think so. I, I'm going to keep saying it. BYU fan, I have no issue with you laying it on to Utah right now. Uh, Ute Nation Goat says not going to the SEC, but Big 10 for sure. Makes too much sense after recent moves. I don't think it makes sense. What is the... And if you look at the Big Ten, the Big Ten has made pragmatic additions. Yes. They're not just going out like getting Poughkeepsie State Technical College of hairdressing. Right? Like, they went and got one of the biggest brands in all of college athletics in USC. Yeah. Right? So, you go and get the Southern California media market. They didn't get SC and UCLA. They got the Southern California media market. Yeah. If they add if they add Oregon and Washington into the Big Ten, they get the Northwest, the great Northwest media market. So now you have reach, you're making money, you're recruiting. Yes. You know, if they add, if they truly add um, the Miami Hurricanes in Florida State, look out. Because now they're in the north, the south, the east, and the west. That's what I mean, dude. That's a thing. Geography. Yeah. Geography. You got to have so, coverage. So Ari is wearing suspenders. And I've always wanted to be a suspender guy. But the boiler is just too much. Like, it's, you know. <laughs> Aria's got like a Aria's a Utah alum. He's in really good shape. Yeah, dude. I just talked about, about Aria. I just talked about how proud I was for you digging that hole to put that bush in there the other day. And Aria's like, please don't go, don't go. We're talking. We're not digging while we're talking. Don't go. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Amazing. Yes. Exactly right. Good to see you, my friend. Talk to you soon. See ya. Appreciate you guys coming in. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, absolutely Dude, amazing. Suspenders are still in. I'm telling you. I've suspenders always, are in, bro. Yeah, I, suspenders. Suspenders in. I've always wanted to be a suspender guy, but I saw my brother wear suspenders once. And I was like, hell no, that's not in the DNA. It's not in the <laughs> genetics, man. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I can, I and I am. We talked about this too the other day. This is funny. Mrs. Monty and I were talking about this, and 
we were talking about how I dress. Right. Right. I used to be jeans, Jordans, and a polo shirt every day. Everybody at Yelp knows that I wear a black Callaway polo shirt every day. It's what I like to wear. But since we started working from home two years ago, I am yoga pants and a black t-shirt. But still Jordans. And Jordans. Right. Thank you. Don't forget that part. Yeah, but you won't let me wear like my my um, Berkies or like that. that no, dude. That you fur. have like 100 pair of Jordans and you want to let them sit in the box. But Mrs. Monty bought me these really nice, like they're slides that are like wool on the inside. So and slippers. They're slides. Anyway, the point is <laughs> they were really comfortable. And Jake's like, hey, you might want to actually make an effort. Yeah. And so like I started wearing <laughs> I started wearing Jordans again. And now we like are out in public and Yeah, your Jordans are gonna see daylight now. It's, it's great. It is. Yeah. So now I'm back to a Callaway polo and, and jeans. Yes. I like I used to be a clothes worth horse. I really like dressing up. I like yes. wearing nice clothes. And now that we're not at the Yelpatory anymore, I can't sit around in yoga shorts or yoga pants and a t shirt mm -hmm. on. Like I actually have to make an effort. Yeah, got to get it going. Working from home requires very little effort. Yeah, it, it really it's, well it spoils you is what it does. Yeah, you have to shave now. Yeah, unfortunately. By the way. Yeah. Well. All right. Uh, let's see. Purple Haze. Good morning. Says Utah doesn't uh, bring in enough revenue to be considered for the Big Ten, but I think they don't bring enough revenue because they're not in the Big Ten. Yeah. Yeah. But Utah yep. Utah draws a TV audience. Utah travels well. Yep. Utah is a Utah used to be the state of Utah used to be one of the great secretive recruiting grounds mm -hmm. because you have the poly community in Utah the is poly just pipeline, so bro. strong and the, the Polynesians and the, the Islanders put out such a good football product. Yes. And they're built. Their bodies are built to to live in the trenches, the star low to or, mm -hmm. you know, like you can think about just about any great poly player. Usually they run through Utah in yes. some form or fashion. Well, it's not a secret anymore, mm -hmm. but I mean, it, it's one of those things where you have all of this opportunity and now Utah can really recruit. Utah goes to Texas, Florida, California, and routinely pulls recruits. I mean, yes. Swag Daddy at, at BYU is a great example yes. of a kid from the Inland Empire who came in and pulled, uh, was pulled by BYU. You look mm -hmm. at the Chaz Ayus of the world mm -hmm. landing helicopters and like you look at all of the recruiting that's come into the state. And why is that? Because BYU is going into the Big 12 and over the last five years, they've won a lot of big football games. Not many against Utah though. Uh, but anyway, the point is, <laughs> I had to. The point is Utah and BYU are now recruiting powerhouses. And I think when you talk about Utah not being a big enough brand or they don't make enough money, I'm telling you, bro, that's that perception reality I, I thing. I just don't think that you can say to the premier brands in what was the Pac-12 that they don't make enough money because they don't have the opportunity yes. right now. That's the problem. So that's why I say, you know, if you are the Big 12, because that's where I think Utah is going to be. If you're the Big 12, you're looking this, at this and you're saying, hey, these are three quality ads if we can get it done in, in Utah – Washington and Oregon. That's just without a doubt. You know, I, I think it's I think it's really interesting to see how things go um, and to see which way Utah ends up. Utah's going to kick ass for somebody. I'm telling you, I really want BYU Utah every year. But I, I think want everybody that so wants that. That's why I, the Big see, makes I sense. don't think that's true. I don't think everybody wants BYU and Utah. I think I don't know what would Bolton. What would you put at? Seventy percent of BYU fans want BYU Utah. I think there's a strong 30% who don't ever want to see that game again. I'd love to. Yeah, Jeremy was, I, was I saying he'd love to have it every year. Yeah, I mean, my thing is, if you're a BYU fan right now, you want that game. You you want the smoke, as they say. But you what, want to take it but to But what them. I don't want is fighting in church on Sundays. What I don't want is, wow. you know... Like I, I, we you're have living to be, in an idealist world if you think that ain't going to happen. And listen, I know, Utah, <laughs> like, I know Utah fans threw beer on Max Hall's mom. I totally get that. And I know that Zach Wilson... Didn't deny that he had relations with his mom's best friend yesterday, by the way. Anyway, Zach. I know that, Zach, I know that there is that kind of vitriol. I think that's very rare. But I think the the mean spirit of the Holy War is what makes yeah. the Holy War great. I'm just telling you. Yeah, BYU, I, Utah, ESPN, twice a year, get it done. Here's the problem, though. Please, please, if you see a friend wearing a, a half red and a half blue anything, get a boat oar. Bro, don't get a boat. Wait, door. I thought you just said you didn't want fighting in church. 
Did you not just say that? Now we're talking about Bodors for people who well, are on the fence. But I'm a Chicagoan. And so these well, idiots no, 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 that no, are in Arlington. Like, in Arlington. In Arlington. Thank but, you. Yeah. Thank you, Chris Carn. Now forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, I see all these people are like, oh, look at my half Cubs, half White Sox hat. No, I won't. I won't. Yeah. Look, hey, look at my Laker and Clipper hat. No. Look at my BYU and you. No, I won't look at it. I won't. You can't do that. You, you just can't. Uh, anyways, I digress into Brett Robbins, who says, I wouldn't do the deal even if I got my three picks or three players and six picks. I want Don, and I want to see him grow this offseason. Donovan Mitchell is one of the most polarizing players. Yeah. Absolutely one of the most polarizing players in, in the NBA right now. Him and Kevin Durant are, are the two hottest topics. SLC Peace Shooter gives us a $5 tip and says double down on the Aggies. Tears. Um, he didn't say tears. He just said Aggies. He, <laughs> he, he stopped at Aggies. Mr. Jara1018 says, I'd love BYU Utah winner goes to the Big 12 championship game the following week. Big 12 lost Bedlam. I'd take Holy War easy. I yeah. don't, that's one of the great tragedies of this realignment. I really hope we don't lose Oregon, Oregon State, the Apple Cup, Washington, Washington State, Bedlam with Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Like, we can't lose that stuff. Okay. The Nye guy, you're a savage for that comment. You're an absolute positive savage. Um, the Nye guy says Zach Wilson gave his mom's friend the Big Ten. Oh, Do you see what he did there? So the Big Ten conference. No, no, I don't see. Then, Can you go ahead and explain that? Yeah, I'm 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 a pass. In, pu I'm in pass. public, I'm, in public at uh -oh, Max Muscle. Uh -oh. Turn uh -oh. Mrs. Monty up, number Mrs. three. Yes, Mrs. Monty. Hello. Are we sure it was the big ten? Maybe the little five? Oh, oh look at that. Oh my bots. goodness. More bots on, as soon as that point, was said. More bots. As soon as that was was said. More bots. We'll have to remove them. Dang. Man, are you kidding me? These naked adult dating sites that are free for all our users? Um, wow! Like what are we? You know, say, you know. I said the bots. Zach Wilson's name one time. Yeah. I said Zach Wilson's name. Bots everywhere. Tell me they don't. This listen. is the Nye guy's fault. Everybody listens. Yeah. Um, the Nye guy. Yeah, this is your fault. By the way, it's funny. Uh, let's see. Uh, Charles Cobb says I hate bots. Yeah. Um, Charles Cobb also says Big Ten should own Cal. They, they really should. should. They should. They really should. They should. The Nye guy just puts the laughing emoji in there. It's not funny. <laughs> It is funny, actually. It is. Everybody's laughing. Polo Bear. Um, you know, let's see. Jose Luis BG, my guy, what's up? He says, yeah, Monty, send those bots to the yeah, Eastern see, Conference see, as well. See, send them and Rudy to, Gobert see, can hang out in the Eastern Conference. Send them to the Eastern with Jake in the, that, in, in, in the Minnesota Timberwolves. the Minnesota Timberwolves. Hey, I don't know if you know this. The Timberwolves play in the Western Conference, Jake. I didn't, I, dang, are, I didn't know sure? that, man. I didn't know that. Did you know? I had no idea. I was completely confused. Okay, good. <laughs> Yeah. The night guy says, sorry, dudes. Uh, Taylor Dopp says, what's your season prediction for BYU in Utah? You know, it's funny. I was talking to Jeremy Bolton about this earlier. I think BYU goes as Jaron goes. Yeah. Health has been a big problem. One of the questions I have about Kalani is, you know, what is he doing to reshape his offseason programs and his body work? Like, because you can't have an offensive line that is without its three best players for se what seven games last year or whatever yeah. it was you you can't be hurt in the trenches you can't be falling apart in the trenches and not have the ability hey there's caitlin you can't have the ability to not have your best players yeah there's it, it just isn't it isn't it isn't realistic well and i think jaron's choices though have to get better as well like i think he well he has to be better about sure. not trying to get the extra two yards i i i, I and, and again it's it's easy to say, hey, like don't try to do that. But I I imagine mentally, it's it's probably a more difficult thing. Barfing chickens is back. That's not a bot site, by the way. Uh, Barfing chicken says Texas will probably go seven and five again or six and seven. My point precisely. See, but Texas, Texas, I'm telling you, our guy, our guy. Pete Kwiatkowski is an amazing defensive coordinator. Yeah, they will I, be better on that and side. Steve Sarkeesian. Yeah. This is make or break for Sark. I don't think anybody but doubts that. he looks that. healthy, bro. He looks way better well, than he, he did. He does look like he has dealt with his demons. And if if Steve Sarkeesian can control the things in his personal life, he and I don't even want to get into his demons, but if, yeah. Steve, if Sarkeesian can control his off-field issues, they're going to win. They're going to win because they have talent um, and they really are. They really have the ability and they have the talent they're recruiting now. They should be able to compete. They should. 100%. You know, bye, Nebraska.
Good to see you, man. Um, <laughs> he had on a Nebraska. Yeah. Show. Um, but that's that's my main thing about about Texas is Sark's been through the battles now. He's been at USC. He's been at Alabama. Like Steve Sarkeesian is ready to win. So let's see. Eric C says uh, I'm late, Monty Town. What did I miss? Recap uh, wow. it. You recap missed quite it. a bit. Let's we are recap it. we are uh, talking Big Ten, exploring adding Oregon, Cal, Stanford, Washington, um, as well as San Diego State. They have looked at. I don't think they'll do San Diego State. I think San Diego State and SMU end up in the Big Twelve. Uh, they're talking to Florida uh, State and Miami about joining um, this morning. Uh, we are live at Max Muscle Nutrition in South Jordan, 3595 South Jordan Parkway. Um, we have Mega Millions tickets. We'll probably be here for another half hour or so, and then we're out. Yep. Um, so make sure you come by. Um, you can also hear today, this is your first chance to enter to win uh, the BYU Notre Dame Shamrock Series drive away at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to be awesome. We're giving you uh, two nights at the Palms Resort Casino, two uh, tickets to the game and a $250 gas card uh, to get you there. It is brought to you by, of course, and as always, our good friend Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage. Listen, folks, if you have mortgage questions, there's a lot of people who DM me yesterday about refining. Yeah. And people are like, you should not to refi. No, what I said was... What I said was, know what you're doing when you refi. Yes. You can call any of the major mortgage brands in this country. They're like, oh, yeah, let's write you a refi right now. Absolutely the right thing to do. Right. Well, not necessarily, because if you only owe 200000 on your house and it's worth 500000 uh, you just picked up like $300,000 in extra mortgage. Mm -hmm. So is that the right thing for you to do? Because you don't just get the money out of your house when you refi. You also got to pay a mortgage on the amount that you added in equity. Yes. So Devery Davis is the guy who could help you navigate that water. If you call Devery Davis today at Academy Mortgage, 801-543-9666, 801-543-9666, NMLS number 278545. Devery Davis and Academy Mortgage are equal housing lenders. If you call Devery Davis today, you get that one-on-one -on -one personal service. Devery is going to walk you through your situation he is, he is the guy that you want on your team because you can call him and say, hey, I'm sitting in front of this listing. I texted you the Zillow link. What do you think? And he's going to say, okay, hey, X, Y, Z. He's going to give you those answers. Hey, Devery, you know, I'm, a, I'm feeling a little tight in my life. I want to refi my mortgage. Should I do that? He's going to tell you yes or no. And there's a pretty good chance if you're not if you're not in a position financially to do it, Devery's going to tell you no. Yeah, he's not the guy that's out to make the money. He's out the, he's out to to take care of you and give you personal service. So make sure you hook up with Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage eight zero one five four three ninety six sixty six NMLS number two seven eight five four five. Devery Davis and Academy Mortgage are equal housing lenders. And then there's barbecue pit stop. This is the new, the big, the best, the greatest, because we are now partnered with Barbecue Pit Stop, and we are going to be doing our BYU grand prize winner for the uh, Shamrock Series Notre Dame game at BYU Pit Stop on September 17th. See, we're going to have a big watch party because BYU is in Eugene to take on Oregon at Autzen Stadium. Yes. We're going to have wings. We're going to have pizza. We're going to have a TV. You're going to be able to watch the game at Barbecue Pit Stop in Lehigh, and then at halftime of the Oregon BYU game, we're going to pull the winner's name and we're going to give you that prize, which is October 7th and 8th in Las Vegas for BYU and Notre Dame at the uh, Shamrock Series uh, at Allegiant Stadium, brought to you by our good friends at Barbecue Pit Stop. Now, here's how Barbecue Pit Stop's involved. You can go to any of their locations throughout the Valley. We're going to have a box on their counter starting next week. All you got to do is fill out the slip, put it in the box. On September 17th, all of those entries will be brought together. We'll put them in a hopper. We'll spin them around, and we're going to pull one winner at Barbecue Pit Stop in Lehigh. Our guy Steve um, had a great time talking to him the other day. We've been Barbecue Pit Stop customers for years now. Yeah. Um, and he's got everything you want. We Personally, we are Traeger Ironwood 885 Consumers. I think it is the best unit in the business, but they have so many smokers Everything you need. And Dude, maybe the Yoder, I think it's Yoder. Oh, my goodness. The Yoder, the Yoder smoker Yoder. line that they have is, w like, wild, man. You, like, if you're somebody who competition smokes, go see Barbecue Pit Stop. If you're somebody like us who just wanted a smoker because we had never had one, so we went and bought one, and we wanted to support a local business, go check it out. Because the reason we got the Ironwood, the Traeger Ironwood 885, 
is because yes, it is pricey, but it isn't the priciest. And it's also built really well because it's not the cheapest. So it's that really nice option that you can find for a smoker that's got plenty of space. You can cook things for the entire family. Like go and check that out. Also, their seasonings, amazing. Would highly recommend the seasoning right. game there too. Yeah. And if you if you already have a smoker and you just want to know more or you have questions. One of the things I really like about Steven is guys at Barbecue Pit Stop. Um, no matter which location it is, you can call them and say, hey, man, you know, I have an Ironwood or I have a Yoder or I have a Big Green Egg. And I'm trying to make a pizza on there, right? Like, wh what's the best thing to do? Or I need to, you know, I need to get some rub for my wings. They have an unbelievable selection of seasonings at Barbecue Pit Stop. Yes. All the tools all the smokers, everything you need, barbecue pit stop. Uh, we'll see you there September 17th. We'll have far more details on that as we get closer. It's about six weeks now. As we get closer to that date, we'll have far more details on that event for you. But it is a pleasure to welcome in Barbecue Pit Stop is our newest partner right here on the Monty Show. And, of course, we announced today, now 38 minutes ago, that um, we are going to move into a big refrigerator box on the street. Yeah, um, a walk-in cooler. Because Yeah, a walk-in cooler. Yeah, Thank that's you. the proper nomenclature. Uh, because we are leaving Yelp as well. This is our full-time gig now here at the Monty Show. This is what we do. Uh, we create content for you. Um, we are going to be doing live three hours starting on Monday. Um, I think you're going to see as football season shows up, you're going to see a lot more video on the show. Um, you're going to see a lot more information on the show. Big name guests will be on the show. There's just a lot more coming on this program and the announcements we're going to make about development on this show is crazy. It is going to be crazy. Tons to be excited about. Super excited. All of that is coming up. And again, we could not do this without you guys. So I just want to say thank you. Um, it has been an incredible ride for this show. So thank you for that. Let's get your thoughts. Uh, let's see. Uh, Renee Rocha says, I'm lucky to have so many trees on my property. My uncle built me a custom pit a decade ago. It'll, it'll last forever. Ooh, I like that. Kay Nuren says, still want to play Notre Dame every year. Go BYU. See, and that's one of the things that worries you about joining the Big 12. Obviously, you have non-conference availability. But if you're trying to win a conference championship or you're trying to go to the college football playoff, are you trying to schedule Notre Dame every year? Well, it depends on strength of schedule and it depends on what your compatriots in the Big 12 do. Yeah. Maybe you need Auburn. Maybe you need, like, Utah scheduling Florida is gangster because there's just no reason to do it other than you want a better non-conference schedule. And I think that's absolutely the right thing to do if you're, you're, you're Utah because you're not getting blown off the field by Florida. You can go to the swamp and you can win that game. The question has always been about about Utah. You know, are, are they you know talented enough? Now they're clearly talented enough. They've ramped up that recruiting. They've won the Pac-12. They've gone to the Rose Bowl. They competed at a very high level down to the final snap against Ohio State. Right. Well, that same question is being asked about BYU because BYU. I mean, they have some nice like going to Nebraska and winning was amazing, right? But the bigger question for me is, can BYU go to Notre Dame every year or, you know, go to South Bend or have them come to Provo and win? Can they physically compete size-wise? Well, right. in the Big 12, you would think you can, though, because we've seen them go to Camp Randall in Wisconsin and get their doors blown off, mm -hmm. right? We've seen them compete against Notre Dame and get their doors blown off. But now you're seeing them run the, run the Pac-12 last year. You're seeing them compete with one of the best teams in the country last year in Baylor. Now, Jaron wasn't himself and probably shouldn't have played in that game, but he did, and they still lost. So to me, the, the question is not when, or the question is not if, it's when BYU gets talented enough and, and assimilates assimilation or it gets built fully into the big 12. Yeah. I think there's a transition process that happens, you know, which is I, I, why I think we that, talked about the, yeah. their physic, their, their ability to stay physically healthy. Yeah. I, I think that, I think that the big 12 will make BYU better. I think that BYU's done a phenomenal job of scheduling, which is why they've had so much success and in independence. And there's that trade off, but clearly BYU uh, and Tom Homo felt like, you know, yeah, there is a lot of value in being in the Big 12. And, and clearly, the mission is to push to winning the Big 12 to create that path to get to the college football playoff. That, yeah. That's what I think the mission is. Purple Hayes says, NBC is trying to set up something with Notre Dame in the Big 12. Well, this has been talked about quite a bit, and we've talked about it on the yeah. show quite a bit. Yeah. Notre Dame's not joining the Big 12. Just understand that. That's a hard stop. They're not joining the Big 12. I think if Notre Dame was joining in a conference, that would be the Big 10. 
But I don't think they'll join a conference in football because, well, Notre Dame thinks they're better than you. Anyway, well, they're Catholic. It's a whole thing. Don't don't worry. It's about a motif. It. They'll confess. It'll be fine. Um, my point is, <laughs> my point is, hey, I grew up Catholic. I can say that. My point is, Notre Dame is not going to join the Big Twelve. What they want to do is partner with the Big Twelve on a TV deal with NBC because you know that NBC football has been for a decade now the home of Notre Dame football. Every home game, including the Shamrock Series at Allegiant Stadium, will be on NBC. What NBC Notre Dame in the Big 12, I think, would like to do is have a Big 12 game before Notre Dame football and after Notre Dame football. Because if we've learned one thing from BYU's deal with ESPN and really the Pac-12's deal with ESPN, Pac-12 after dark is absolutely a commodity. You get a million people watching that game. No matter what that game is, essentially you get a million people, yes. right? Yes, yep. So if you get a million people to turn out on NBC and Peacock and USA Network and CNBC, if all of those on a Saturday afternoon are stocked with Big 12 football and they're all pushing you to NBC to watch Notre Dame and that game then pushes you to watch the late Big 12 game, now you're cooking with gas. Yeah. You're making more money, more people are watching NBC, more people are on their advertisers, more people are subscribing to Peacock like those streaming services that everybody is desiring now, mm -hmm. NBC's got Peacock, and it's struggling. You need more people. NASCAR, frankly, did not bring the boys to the yard on the Peacock network, the streaming apparatus. It didn't bring enough people to, the, to that app, and I think they thought it would. Right. They're getting more bang for their buck in the Peacock app out of, like, you know, Chicago Wednesdays than they are at a NASCAR, which is a big deal. By the way, did you see the Camping World left NASCAR? Yeah, I think that, about that, that story? But, but again, it just goes back to what we've been talking about. Whether you're the Utah Jazz or the Pac-12 or your NASCAR, you have to do a better job. You have to find ways to innovate and, and get your brand out there. That's what the name of the game is. Yeah, you guys are crazy with the comments today. Thank you so much. There's a ton of people commenting on the show today. Patrick Boren says, uh, Notre Dame is not joining the conference. However, they may be interested in a media rights partnership for sure. And then he said, bingo, as I was describing it. AMAC says, uh, U Utah may be a better program right now, but they are a late to the game program. I'd agree with that. Florida State is definitely a bigger brand and more well-known and more valuable. That's not a knock on Utah. Great program. No, it's perception versus reality. I think it's who you ask. I think it's who you ask. I would tell you that, you know, Utah is winning right now. You know, they're having more yeah. success. Has Florida State done a lot in the last 10 years? Yeah, they have. But I, I, I personally would take Utah over over Florida, uh, Florida State right now. No, I would agree with that. Brian Clegg, good morning to you, friend. He says, I second that sentiment, Monty. It is Friday. So tired, man. Hey. It's, no, it's not Friday. It's Friday of next week. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it. That's what it. I always say that on Friday because I'm always, like Friday is that day for us, and this is one of the things I'm looking forward to about this being the gig now. Friday for us is is that day where the grind kind of slows down because when you when you're in a performance based job like mm -hmm. working at Yelp, selling at Yelp, or working it, for yourself, it's a grind. Well, I you know, but I'd rather grind for myself, yeah, yeah. than for Yelp. And again. Again, Yelp has been fantastic, but it's a mental game. It is absolutely a mental drain. It is, it's a grind. So yeah. taking that grind out makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to me, that is, that's what life's all about. So yeah, it's Friday of next week for sure. <laughs> uh, Christopher Thompson says, you guys are awesome. Keep up the good work. Appreciate, Appreciate that, that very much. Um, you know, one other thing I want to talk about though, real quick on football while we're talking about this, I want to get to this Kyler Murray story. And then we have to talk about Beyonce and Jay-Z because the, the Beyonce-Jay-Z story is crazy. Um, did you guys see the Arizona Cardinals removed the homework clause mm -hmm. from Verticality's contract? Verticality. So, what? Kyler Little Murray. guy. Little, little dude. Kyler. By the way, did you see, and I don't know, do we have that sound or not? But yeah, yeah, it's in there. It's in yesterday, oh, it's in here. Okay, good. Yesterday, Kyler Murray met with the media. And I want you to listen to this because it's crazy to me. Listen to how many times Kyler Murray here talks about his size. To think that I can accomplish everything that I've accomplished in my career um, and not be a student of the game and not, um, not, not have that passion and not, not take this serious is, is almost, it's disrespectful. And it's, it's, almost, it's, it's almost a joke, you know, um, it's to me, it's um, I'm flattered. You know, I'm, I'm honestly flattered that y'all think that at my size I can go out there and not prepare for the game and not um, you know, not take it serious. It's it's it's, it's disrespectful. I feel like to my peers, to all the 
to all the, the great athletes and great players that are in this league, um, this game's too hard. Uh, to, to play the position that I play in this league, um, it's, it's, it's too hard. And, and I don't do this often. I don't talk about myself, but today I feel like I have to. And so I'm going to list the accolades. You know, to go 43-0 in high school in Texas, um, some are going to say, oh, it's high school. That's cool, but nobody else has done it. Um, go to college, win the Heisman, um, get drafted number one overall to the NFL, get drafted number nine overall to the MLB. Again, no one's ever done it. Um, offensive Rookie of the Year, two-time Pro Bowler. Um, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not 6'7", 230. I don't throw the ball 85 yards. Um, I'm, I'm already behind the eight ball, uh, and I can't, you know, I can't afford to take any shortcuts, no pun. That's crazy to me. Yeah. He sits there talking about how he's, he's small. I'm not 6'7". I don't throw the ball 85 yards. Like, he's ta- he talked about his size three times in a minute. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing is, when the Cardinals removed – this clause from his contract they said it was not interpreted as intended how did you intend this you put a clause in the guy's contract that said he has to study four hours a day yes when he's not at work yes so when you did that what you implied was he's either lazy he doesn't watch film he does not study he thinks he too does, highly of himself he does not prepare what did you think people were going to say about this? And this wouldn't be the first time that the Cardinals as an organization have uh, not done done oh. something to the highest standard. And I, and I just think that, you know, when I hear Kyler talk about that, part of me is like, well, what else would he say? But then part of me is like, hey, like, he's got to stand up for himself. And then another side of me says, what were the Cardinals doing here? Why would you put that in his contract? He's the franchise quarterback you've been looking for since Carson Palmer retired. You finally get him. You pay him 160 million guaranteed and then you include a clause that says you don't work hard enough work harder because that's what you did yeah this is complete ineptitude from the arizona cardinals it is steve keim at his best unfortunately the general manager as as lopes fan gabe calls him drunky the clown Mm -hmm. this is the same guy that's gotten multiple duis this is the same guy that this guy said they you finally did well with players and then you do this to this remember how they got kyler murray let's not forget because i think this is a really important point you drafted josh rosen you gave him one year he was under a new head coach in who by the way you gave one year you gave the coach and the quarterback one year then you said that wasn't good enough you completely wiped it out you went and got good old cliffy from texas tech you went and drafted kyler you moved up in the draft to get kyler at number one overall and then you do this, and I, and I just say that, that, that it's just so Cardinals. It's so on brand, you know? So, I don't know. I, I'm still on the fence about whether Kyler likes to watch film or not. I yep. think he watches film because he needs to, but I don't know that he wants to. Fat Jesus says he makes a good point about the game being too hard, but when he criticizes people for being disrespectful and disgust his record, I hate him. Go cards, but I really can't stand Kyler. And I think this is part of the problem now, is it creates this narrative and really, it perpetuates the belief that Kyler's a weird guy. Mm-hmm. And frankly, he is a weird guy. He doesn't... This is Ricky Williams wearing his helmet during media availability. Right. That's who Kyler Murray is. He is an awkward personality. He is not confident. He well, is and he's not, not revered by his himself. teammates. You, you always know when your quarterback's well, doing well when he's revered by his teammates. And Kyler Murray is not. And I think an interesting comparison... Man. With this whole contract thing uh, that I want to make is Zion Williamson. So the Pelicans and Zion Williamson's contract (laughs) have put in stipulations that say he has to maintain, and I'm not joking, 100% serious, he has to maintain a certain body fat percentage. He has to, you know, be able to do certain things. Maybe he should get some emerge from max muscle to keep his body fat percentage in in the right range, right? That's right. So my point just is, is that, listen, it's not unusual to put stipulation like performance-based stipulations in these contracts, but this one for the Cardinals, as usual, felt like they were on the back foot. Like they just kind of threw something in the contract, hoping it would work out for the best instead of just having a conversation yeah. with Kyler. Eric and Raleigh wants to know if Dennis Lindsay is negotiating contracts for the Cardinals. I mean, apparently, now. apparently. Yeah. By the way, on that Zion thing, he, Jake was not joking. Zion Williamson's new max contract that he got the extension has a stipulation for a weight. He must be at all times below a certain weight and below a certain body fat percentage. So what do people think of that? Well, naturally, what are we going to say? Well, Zion's fat. 
That's but that's what it does. Now is it's he a fat? lack of professionalism sure, sure is what is. it is. But what it's it, it, that's exactly what I was gonna say. It points to you're not professional, you don't want to be here, you don't work hard, and that's exactly what you did to Kyler Murray. And by the way, it's not us that matters. That's what you said to his teammates. Hey, we just gave you $160 million, you unprofessional, non-film watching jerk. That's what you just said yes. about Kyler Murray. How do you expect this guy to succeed? And what I would say is if I'm Kyler Murray, did you not know this clause was in there? Because you signed the contract. That's the tough part. That's the tough part. If you knew this was in there, I would not have signed the contract. I'd have played my year out and I would have left. And I, because to me, it's in, oh, Jake. Dude, more bots. We talk about, we talk about Beyonce and Jay-Z. And now there are more bots. More bots. Now I have to remove. More bots. Dadgummit. Yeah. And I will have to report them now. All right. Before we get out of here, before we get out of here, let's talk about, because this story here mm -hmm. is remarkable. A to great me. capper to the show. It is a great capper to the show. Live at Max Muscle Sports Nutrition in South Jordan. Um, come on by. It, you absolutely should be here. Jake talked about their uh, Emerge product. I have, like I said, I've been a Max Muscle customer with, with Taylor and Caitlin for 10 years, over 10 mm -hmm. years now. Um, Emerge is by far the best weight loss, energy focus, um, brain power supplement I've, I've ever used. Um, peach is my favorite flavor. I get the one in the bag. I take two scoops with 20 ounces of water once a day. And I usually do that in the morning. And I usually don't have that fog that I usually have until about 1030 in the morning. It usually clears it out, which is great. So I feel better. Um, it's a performance supplement. I'm telling you, come in and get it. Emerge. It's cherry or, or peach. For me. I got to go with peach, man. Cherry's a close second, but peach is my jam. Mrs. Monty's a peach person, too. Yeah. I wonder if Beyonce's a peach person. Jay-Z clearly is not. Do you see not. what I did there? Beyonce and the peach? Right. Beyonce and um, the peach. Right. 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 So I'm laying in bed last night. I'm like, what are we going to talk about non-sports stories? Hmm. And then I see the story that Beyonce has forgiven Jay-Z for being unfaithful to her. Oh. Okay. So what do we know about Beyonce? Okay. We are proud we are strong we are women i don't know a single song that she's sung but i'm sure she's sung songs about being proud dude, and strong there, okay beyonce is right? a legend let's let's but her not brand even, is dude no her, she is a legend yeah, as a no musician doubt. but her brand is strong powerful empowered as be, women as right? it should be yes so then jay-z turns around and cheats on her yeah you have what what is unequivocal about beyonce is she's a beautiful woman right, right? i yeah. mean there's yeah that's there definitely is no part doubt about that like she is beautiful you guys are quite literally billionaires. Rock Nation, Beyonce's brand on her own, all the of Nets. that. The Nets, you're, everything. At what point do you say to yourself, ah, Beyonce's not enough. But look at Carol over there. She's best friends with Zach Wilson's mom. <laughs> okay, that was probably a step too far. But my point yeah. is, at what point do you say I, to, to Beyonce, yeah, you know what? This has been fun and all, but. Yeah, I just don't understand it. I wonder what goes through your... Well, I don't want to wonder. This is what I say about athletes, I almost though. said I wonder what went through Jay-Z's mind. No, we don't need to wonder about that. I don't want to wonder. Uh, I, this is what I say about athletes, you know, guys like Jay-Z. Like, I, this is the problem. You get to a certain level, you mm -hmm. get content, and you need the new thing. That's the problem. What I always say about this is, it's a power, it's a power thing for guys. And I think if you look at the history of scandals related to men and women... The list is endless. Sharing tight spaces yeah right you look at the clintons you look at the kennedys you look at harvey weinstein you look at beyonce and jay-z mm -hmm. it's powerful men making really stupid decisions for for conquest and, and lust. for their moment and i'm telling you as i always say pornography is the great destroyer of men i know you're tired of hearing me talk about that but how many stories are we going to talk about on this show where a guy gets wrecked like Jay-Z. Now, Beyonce says, hey, I've forgiven him. And she talks about her faith and forgiveness and healing. And she's handling it well. Their marriage will never be the same. Of course not. Because once you step out on your spouse, there's the, the it's impossible, in my opinion, it's impossible to wholly get over that. It's always going to be, well, hey, you know, Jay-Z's five minutes late. Well, let me text him. You know, like, what did we talk about yesterday with the phone thing? Hey, should I be looking at your DMs? LeBron's wife, because if mm, you missed the story yeah, yesterday, yep. an Same Instagram deal. model that Mrs. Monty was furious about, but an Instagram <laughs> model outed LeBron James for getting into her DMs, allegedly. 
and she showed yeah. pictures of him looking at her story and all this stuff. If you have to ask the question, if you're LeBron James's wife, are you asking him about that? Are you bringing that up? I don't know. I, don't know. I, I think that depends on the, the substance and the, the structure think, of the relationship. I, I mean, think I think it's different for everyone. But if you're Jay-Z and Beyonce, they're renowned as best friends, husband and wife, business tycoons together. Is it ever the same? Yeah, I don't know. Was it worth it? Are, for, you, in a, are you even in a position to part because of the level you're at? You're probably not. It has nothing to do with money. Well, no, I'm I mean, not saying money, but like all the things you have going. Like th this, this conversation obviously has more impact on someone who is Jay Z and Beyonce and at their level and all the stuff that they've done. I'm telling it's you, it's different crazy. for like LeBron's level than than your average person, even for us. Yeah, Jeremy Bolton, who is sitting ten feet in front of me, comments maybe Beyonce gave Jay Z the Masha Kirilenko pass. Well, remember Andre Kirilenko? Famously, his wife told him once a year, mm -hmm. free pass. Nah. See, I can't do that. Nah. I, I can't nope. do that. Nope. That's right. David C says it's tainted love. See, that's him. You're 13 years old, so you don't know the, right. the song Tainted Love. Okay. I'm a casual in that sense. He's not 13. I'm a casual in that sense. Mentally. Right. He's 13. Right. Um, you know, what Patrick Bourne says, you just mentioned all the jobs the new Big 12 commissioner was on. Okay. I'm not sure what that means. Eric and Rowley says, do you think Beyonce didn't know before it happened? Well, that's the other thing. You don't know what happens behind closed doors. She knew before it got out right? to the public. I guarantee oh, you that. Oh, had to. I guarantee you that. Because yeah. she had a statement ready. Yeah. She had a statement ready, right? Yeah. But I also think part of this part of this is social media, and I know we have to go, but part of this is social media and the tabloids of the world. Mm -hmm. Like, I just I, just think twice before you think, you, you think, go and, before you step out, I think you got to think twice, man. Yeah. I can't even imagine that. Anyway, all right, show's over. Amazing job by you guys today. Um, big thanks to, to Taylor and Caitlin for letting us be here at Max Muscle. Thanks to uh, everybody who came out, got mega tickets. Um, don't forget, Monday, starting Monday at Barbecue Pit Stops across uh, the Salt Lake Valley um, and Utah County as well, there's going to be a box on the counter at every Barbecue Pit Stop. You'll be able to drop an entry slip in to win a trip to see BYU and Notre Dame, the Shamrock Series at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, brought to you by our good friend Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage and Barbecue Pit Stop. Until Monday, say goodbye, Jake. Goodbye, Jake.